So it's yeah. Yeah. So here, sign that. Okay. Especially, even though we're we're defacing the cover of his Lords of Waterdeep. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. We're making it more valuable, right? Cool. Sweet. All right. Do I say hi to the chat room, David? Oh, there's the camera. Right there. Right there. Hey. Hey, everybody. Our first signature on uh, Lords of Waterdeep. Uh, was bought by Richard Lowe. And, uh, nice. Thank you, Richard. That's awesome. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's, that's the big purchase, really. Cool. Yeah. How's cool. it going? How was your game? Uh, it, was, it was great fun. My uh, my character failed miserably. I played uh, <laughs> I played Blaze, the nerdy wizard, and I, uh, despite a power that allows me to re-roll once per encounter, I rolled four critical misses uh, <laughs> in key moments, ruining my encounter powers, and uh, was made fun of by the entire rest of the group. Awesome. Um, I was pantsed early in the adventure, yeah. and uh, mocked, and uh, throughout, yeah. and uh, in the final encounter, I pledged my allegiance to the villain <laughs> in order to exact revenge, and he so you rebuffed me. Wow. And so I, I, I cried a lot, and then after the adventure, I ran away from home to become a dark wizard and exact my avenge, revenge. Real? Wow, so the next time, in a year from now, all these tables will be playing against you. I, I'm going to talk to Keith and see uh, if we can get Blaze's in. revenge. <laughs> uh, also, because I cried all of my tears, Blaze had tears tattooed on his face, streams of tears on his face, uh -huh. uh, as his dark wizard. Oh, very cool. And uh, what, um, what was like the, the most action of the, the whole adventure? What was the most interesting thing? That happened. Um, well, uh, one of our characters retrieved an artifact, this, uh, uh, I guess, onyx skull. Sure. And uh, uh, just unceremoniously plucked it out, you know, having never watched uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark or anything before. Oh, yeah. And uh, the ceiling collapsed on us, and I <coughs> launched myself to try to protect one of my, uh, well, the, it was early in the adventure, one of my companions, and Critical missed that role as well. <laughs> so sprawled on the ground and then was buried under tons of rubble. Right. Um, okay. And and then that was shortly after I'd been pants. So gotcha. it was that kind of began my descent into darkness. What, what was your best moment? Yeah. You didn't have any die rolls uh, that went that way. I, yeah. Well, I I did do a little bit of damage to the bad guy in the end after he would rebuffed my <laughs> deciding to become his acolyte. Um, but it really wasn't anything. Uh, it was it was pathetic. It was yeah. it was a, through tears I cast a spell on him that sort of moved the needle a little bit. But it was bad news for Blaze all around. Wow. Bad news. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, would you pick that character again? I, I love that. Okay. I love. Play, I All mean, right. I like to play wizards anyway. Yeah. So I was actually I arrived last at my table, and as would be right, I was picked last. The, the nerd character yeah. was picked last, so I ended up with him. And I, but I love playing wizards. I, the the challenge of keeping a character like that alive at low levels, although the game is more balanced now than it used to when we were kids. Um, but also, yeah, I mean, it was great fun role playing. The dice were not my friend today, but yeah. playing with great role players makes sure. it fun anyway. Yeah. Who else was at your table? Uh, it was Damien and Mandy and George Rockwell was our DM and uh, I've forgotten the other folks' names who I don't know. Look at this. Uh, and then it was Coop and Zach and Bruce, who I had never met. None of the three who I'd ever met before. Who was like the most uh, crucial player at the table? Zach. Zach played the eight-year-old like uh, whirlwind character. Um, he had uh, tricks and uh, tools and stabbiness and yeah. Zach. Uh, the, Damien played the tank and he barely got a lick in. Zach really? almost single-handedly took down the main bad guy at the end. Wow, the eight-year-old kid. Well, that's pretty uh, fun. He, earlier he wrestled like a zombie to the ground yeah. and badass. Cool. Um, well, cool. What, uh, what's been going on with you? you for anyone who doesn't know, you uh, created Gold, the web series, and uh, the sequel, which was uh, Night of the Zombie King. Yeah. Bring back zombies. Awesome. Um, yeah. So what, what's going on now? What are you up to? Um, we're actually just working on another project that is not actually nerd-related. Um, I play a nerd character in it, so at least it's a little bit of that, but uh, we're, we're finishing up some post-production on that. Um, but we are, we have started talking about Gold Season 2 again, which is obviously very important to me, so um, we've been struggling to find the cash for it, as always is the case with any stuff. Um, but we think we've figured some stuff out, so we're looking toward that again. So we've got this other, this really
really big project that's kind of ri winding down right now and then hopefully looking to gold again next. Awesome. Where can people find you? Uh, DavidNet.com, GoldTheSeries.com, and DavidNet on Twitter, slash DavidNet on Facebook. Awesome. Well, thanks for sitting in with us. Thank you, Sam. It was great fun. It always is. Awesome. Uh, and thank you, everybody, who donated and watched. It's a great cause. Uh, Satine puts together a fantastic yeah, event. This is what, uh, fourth time we've done this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Keith has written the adventures for all of them. And it's it's just an uh, amazingly fun time. And it's good to be able to do it for a good cause. Yeah, for sure. So cool. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks, thanks guys. Right. Of course, man. Thank you. Are we going to bring someone else on in a second? Come on in! Okay. Sure. Why not? Hey, I'm Sam. Hi. What's going on? I can go with you. Yeah. Here, you want to come in? Yeah, come on. Cool. Does everybody scoot in? All right. In? All right. Yeah. Sure. Three is usually good. I think uh, she's talking to somebody. Yeah. All right. We'll be me. Yeah, nobody wants to look at that girl, the beautiful girl with the giant boobs. Well, well, we, know. Know. well we, got, we got one. Um, All right. So, who would you guys play? I was the kid um, whose name is, what's the kid's name? Forgot. Junior. Junior, yeah. Junior, that's, that's why it's it. hard to remember. I was Junior, and you were the old mate. I was the grumpy old dwarf. Right. It was very yeah, out of character dwarf. for me, yes. Yeah, because you're totally not. <laughs> I'm like totally that. not like that at all. Yeah. Um, it's a good uh, Yeah, yeah it's except good for the ball part. But, uh. <laughs> yeah, so what happened, like, if you play D&D, &D, you probably know a bunch of people who don't, and they're your friends, and you hate them because they don't play. <laughs> and the reason that they don't play literacy, right? <laughs> they don't like reading, right? All those people out your window, in your apartment, at school, at your job who aren't playing D&D, &D, too much reading, right? So if you want your life to be better and people like you to be happier, you need people to read books. And that's what we're trying to do, create people who can read books. We're creating friends small friends. Yeah, for people <laughs> in the future. For future people. That we'll never meet. Yes, but because we that's, that's why we're good. <laughs> right? <laughs> totally. Hi. This is Mandy. Uh, she should be. Yeah. Right? She's in the shot. You want to sit right here? It's okay. <laughs> for now. Explain to people why reading is good. <laughs> Asking me questions, reading is good because it makes you smart and and you Smart and sexy. Yes. Well, also, if you get an email from a hot girl going, can you come and paint me? I live in Canada. You'll be able to read it. Yes. That's, That's what Right? Helps. Exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, where would you be without reading? Well, I, I also wouldn't be able to read emails from girls that want me to come and take photos of them naked. So right? And that's Reading is you can't, awesome. You can't even play video games if you can't read. You can't. That's how my niece was. You can play read. Peggle, which is really good. But, <laughs> but no, but don't wait, wait, you're no, ruining your argument here. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, so we raised like, you can't I think we raised about $200 now. Well, Oh, but come on. More. We gotta do better yeah, than that. Yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of retweeting to do. Yeah, I could play saxophone on the corner and raise $200. Well, I couldn't actually Ready, play. No, I can't. Even. No, not no. at all. Then you're a liar. Yeah. yeah. I could play it like it but was a drum. But people would pay him to stop playing. That's me. true. That's, that's a great like a hooker. Yeah. yeah. That's a great way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how it works? Yeah, that is. <laughs> oh, get off <laughs> money. You're so um, bad at this. <laughs> yeah, so um, help us. Donate $5 to watch two tables, or one at a time, or donate $10 so you can get the PDF. He should have made the adventure harder so we'd still be playing, I guess. Well, they're playing. He always makes, I, I've played several of his adventures by now, and they're really easy. He's so nice. <laughs> they're all one-shots is the thing, so I'm always like, I'm like, nobody's going to die. 
it'll be fine, right? Yeah, it's, it's well, true, the right? Last time somebody sacrificed himself. But that doesn't count. It wasn't like they had to count. die, right? Yeah, Sacrificing yourself. You guys both played the last one. Yeah. What do you think about this versus the last one? The last one was a reality show. I think that I didn't play the reality show. I wasn't here for that one. You no, the last one I played was the one that you ran uh, on your podcasty thing with Dodger. That has nothing to do with this. I know. I'm just saying that was the last time you ran. I ran something at Keith Road, so I wasn't. Oh. And, and then I was at the one before this, but I wasn't at the last one because we were in Montreal. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, what do you think? I think that the last one was probably more. It was. It was a little more of a challenge in terms of trying to figure out exactly what you had to accomplish to to complete it, whereas this, I think this one was a lot more, I, this was just a really good table. Everybody was having fun and everybody was in character and it was it was very entertaining. So, so what was the biggest challenge? Um, well, we kept rolling really bad. We got numbers. a lot of ones and lot 20s, of, yeah. which is always a great... Yeah. Yeah. David Nett had a hard time rolling anything ever. Well, but that sort yeah. of turned into his character, so yeah, that was, he was kind of good. Yeah, he was the guy who so. rolled ones and cried. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good yeah, and now he's gonna he's got a cat he's, he's gonna turn into an evil sorcerer yeah. who rolls ones and cries. So that's good, yeah. So what'd you guys do in the in the second? Oh no. They can't hear us. Well, yeah, I mean So what um what did you do when the ceiling fell down? Uh I actually Okay, so you know people weren't in the room that yeah. yeah. Okay, so I was like, this is a puzzle trap as soon as I saw it. It was like black tiles and white tiles. So Mandy started walking and she was like, okay, you stand on a black tile, you get attacked by a wizard, you stand on a white tile, you get attacked by an archer. And so I was like, okay, then I was the next person. So I threw a rope around one of the statues and tie and anchored the rope so you didn't have to walk on the floor at all. He started crawling out on it. He's halfway out and then the they, cleric everyone and wizard were like, you just walk. oh, you could just walk on their runes and avoid it. And so he felt like an idiot for a second because he was like walking over, like but everyone then, was just walking over the runes to get to the thing. Then when they got, when Mandy got the skull and it started, the ceiling started falling in. I wasn't even in there. The cheerleader wasn't even in there yet, and she ran back. So there was really two people who were in there when the ceiling collapsed. And I just, oh. I yanked on the rope which he was already on, uh -huh. rolled a twenty. So Sweet. we were all good. And then you know, so it was actually. Only one person really got hurt. Oh, really? Yeah. I used the spell. And that was David, myself. of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually played this, um, George, Ramon, and I at the Omni. And, uh, at Comic Con. Nice. And we're like eating oysters and drinking wine. Yeah, I wasn't we there that day. We all got stuck. It was so much different than we played it. Though. How was it? That's interesting though. How was yeah, it? Yeah, how, what, what did we not do or do that you were there? You know all of it. But but it was like, well, what was different is that like, so I played Junior, but I played it, I played Junior so much differently. Yeah. It was really interesting to see you play him because. You gotta put your head down. Oh, okay. So, so Satine, you were Ash, right? And so my character was supposed to like Junior's supposed to have some kind of crush on Ash, right? So I played that up like ridiculously, and I was just trying to outdo you? the older brother. Like I was trying to prove that I was like more worthy of her than the older brother. Yeah. The whole time, and my character ended up strangely like ours. Everyone ended up wanting to be a villain at the end. Like my character would definitely wanted to be like an antihero or a villain at the end because he did. He was like, like I happened to roll really well that game, and so like he was doing all this. Really Really heroic stuff, but like he was getting no rewards for anything. Like, and then like he tries to take the like the moment to like kiss the girl, and she's like, "Get the fuck off me," you know. And it's like, and then ends up going out with the older brother, and he's like, "Fuck this." You ended up dating your old own older yeah. brother. No, she ended up the character. Okay. Yes. Ended up being in love with the older brother. You made like a chart, the pros and cons of me. Right, I did. I made a chart of the pros and cons of her during the game. <laughs> she like resented me so much. It was like, I felt really bad as a person. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Wait, we didn't even get into any of that. That yeah. was... Uh, you guys weren't playing with charts? What kind of... <laughs> yeah, I'm... We were also playing in like a very classy restaurant. There were like pe waiters around and bringing wines and cheeses and stuff. It was really wacky. It's the most expensive place I've So how do you... Okay, Wait, so this is a classy place. Yeah, what is? There were cupcakes here. This is yeah. the center of L.A.C. 
social life, the back room of Meltdown Comics. <laughs> yeah, um, I think it is. Okay, so the first encounter, the dwarf, what it, the dwarf that is invulnerable, what did you guys do with him? I did the same thing. I, I attacked it immediately to try and prove that I was braver than my older brother. And uh, and I critical hit it, and it healed up. And then I, I like we all, everyone just kind of stood on that side until we realized we should probably run around. That's probably why we finished before everyone else, because you finished in one round. We're like, wait, you could go around him. <laughs> we were fighting it. It was like murdering us. Wow. Yeah. Because <laughs> I always do when I play 4E is I go, what can I do that would be better than all these powers? Because I hate them. <laughs> and so That's I was like, pretty much how I play. <laughs> I just, I'm not going to use my spells. I'm just going to play with normal things. This one was edited down though, right? It, it is, but I think that you're saying like... Yeah, I mean, Keith has a skinnier, yeah. But uh, are you talking about like uh, like Pathfinder type stuff where you end up with like kind of less team? I less just play powered character. I just like yeah. Re I mean pre path like old old ADD. like just right. like no just roll the hit. That's it. Everything else is 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 ruled on the fly. You right. know. And I just like and so I'm always looking at the sheet going if I just do something and it's cool because I it's there. Right. That's not fun for me. It's, right. You know. And so I was. Like okay, I'm gonna let everybody else figure out if this thing is vulnerable to radiant damage or necrotic damage or magic damage, and I'm gonna take my action after that. And then I just stood behind it, and it was like, oh, it's not doing anything. Yeah, I mean, you were doing lots of like clever skill-based stuff rather than like I like that you're stuff. that I'm that I got to pretend that I was. I mean, <laughs> I just said I'll go around him, but but yeah, I like to avoid the. Avoid the system. Well, like attaching the rope to the throwing dagger, throwing it around the, the head of the thing, of the statue. Yeah, Keith always likes, like, you always get this infinite equipment list right. when you play a Keith adventure. Like, you have whatever you want. And My I'm character like, had right. nothing. She had the clothes she was wearing in a diary. Yeah, but you could make up any clothes. <laughs> no, she, she said she was wearing a funeral dress that was really cool that she got from a thrift store in Imperial City. But you could say it's 60 feet long and it's made of cordite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the spell book was cool, though, right? Like, like she just had a diary. Oh, oh of her own poetry. Was <laughs> nice. I thought you had a dagger of sadness or something. No, no, she had a she had a, a sword that blade of sorrow. Or right, something? that that like a magic sword that was formed from her own loneliness. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Miss, I was like, oh, she's not lonely enough right now because everyone's working together. Yeah. But then you tried to become more lonely. I, really, I want to see the right. process of forging a sort of loneliness. <laughs> like, what goes into it? Do you just like cry and you're just like sad and banging? I don't think, crying I don't think and she's masturbation. Really I think Blaze had that covered. <laughs> oh, Blaze. Yeah. Well, yeah. Blaze was, she was crying a lot. Just, she was just hard and cold. <laughs> Blaze really, had. Really he, he's getting tattooed uh, the tear tears for every critical fail that he rolled, which is a lot of tears. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys, we've got like almost 600 people in the live room watching us. Okay, so if we have 600 people and each person just put in a dollar, we would double. There are five dollars, it would be even better. But, but even if you just put in one each, then which you, you can't. would get. You would have this knocked out of the park. Yeah. yeah so, so everyone just, to just donate five dollars. Five dollars. And that would be it, and you'd be done. To, uh, Find the donation links on milcomics.lon. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to launch a new domain thing. Uh, .lon is going to be really popular. .com. Uh, oh, and uh, Serena, Serena asked, uh, I pay for table one, but I can't figure out how to. Um, you should get an email. Uh, I got, I'll go fix this. <laughs> check, check emails. Wait, Satine's on it. But in the meantime, for everyone else, uh, go to milcomics.com and donate. Donate so that we can help uh, get books to kids. Guys, what was the uh, what was your character's uh, best moment? Uh, boy, I don't.
don't know. I didn't really do much. <laughs> when I rolled when all I, those uh, dice. When I when I hit the, uh, I think when I tried to smash the skull and I rolled a one, that was my best moment. <laughs> yeah. Best or funniest? <laughs> well, yeah. does it really matter? It was a quality <laughs> moment. Yeah. I think when it turned out that the rope thing was actually useful, because <laughs> <Right. laughs> like, there was a built-in solution to that puzzle that you could, you know, but it was like, oh, we've got a rope. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so that. Of the dwarf hanging. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was, was another good. great moment that was for a me good one for, for both of us. Yeah. Uh, I think when I just walked into the trap room and shots kept missing me, and I was like totally not like I'm not gonna get hit. I'm just gonna go get the skull, and it worked. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, Satine's back, but they've left the chat room, so I, either they figured it out or their computer died. <laughs> We're like, I'm sad. <laughs> um, well, cool. Where, uh, where can people find more about you guys? What are you, your Twitter? Is your website? Uh, well, I'm Art, Art of Coop on Twitter. I have a website called theartofcoop.com. And uh, you can go to my, you can buy my new book uh, called Idle Hands. Is either on Amazon or uh, babytattoo.com is the publisher and I guess that's it or I might be walking down the street and if you see me say hi yeah <laughs> uh, I've got a, a blog that I update almost every day called playing D&D &D with porn stars which is a good blog about playing D&D &D with porn stars because that's our group here in LA uh, so you can go there and check out all uh, our D&D &D stuff also if you play D&D &D, you can uh, uh, add me on Google Plus, and we play a lot of like hangout games, like over video chat, and just talk about games and stuff. So if you're into, if, or if you live somewhere like and you don't know any gamers there, you can add me on G Plus and then be like, I live in Arkansas and don't have any friends, and I can put up the thing and uh, other people who are into games. Uh, who will read it and they'll be like and they'll get in touch with you and you can read shit that they write and see if they're creepy and if they're not uh, you guys can hang out um, so yeah if, and blah and Mandy's on there but you've got your own site too yeah I'm also on G Plus just as Mandy Morbid and you can add me there you can also find my Facebook fan page I'm on Twitter everything's got the same name it's just Mandy Morbid Mandy Morbid Tumblr Facebook G Plus Twitter whatever just Google Stars. Porn star. Uh, That's what Google is for. <laughs> this is Toyota Today, um, the most fuel efficient full line automotive manufacturer with yeah. more hybrids on the road than all other automakers yeah. combined. Yeah. You want it's better? True. Yeah. Also, everyone should buy Vornheim. It's amazing, says right. Richard Lowe. Richard Lowe. Richard. Smart. He's a and genius. Richard is the one who um, bought um, the $60 game, oh, cool. uh, the Lords of Water Deep, which no, you guys should sign. Yeah. I already did. Oh, you did. Okay. Cool. Very cool. Uh, yeah, I wrote a supplement for D&D. Um, so I'm signing the cover? Yeah, yep, okay. that is what's going on. Oh, yeah. There you go. There we go. Wow, that was fast. <laughs> um, yeah, you can go and you can look. Uh, if We had a web show for a while. Uh, Justine Jolie plays with us once in a while. Sasha Gray. Kimberly Kane. Satine was in porn for a while. Uh, Mandy does a movie once in a while. Um, yeah, that's us. Uh, blah. <laughs> well, you have something else? What you're doing right now is typing and reading, and there are people who can't do that here in Los Angeles. And they're stupid. <laughs> and you don't want them to be stupid. So donate a little bit of money to make people less stupid. <laughs> or at least teach them to read. I don't know if it'll make them less stupid. Right? I feel like reading is directly linked to, you know, some awareness of the world. Intelligence builds on knowledge. So if you have
a little knowledge, you might get a little, a little brighter. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like when you're cooking with no ingredients, right? Like, you could be the greatest cook in the world, but if all you have is bread, peanut butter, and jelly, you can only make one sandwich, right? That's right. If you got some chicken or bacon. Just a peanut butter or just a jelly sandwich. You can only make a You can make maybe three number. types of sandwich. Well, that's math, which, you know, that's, this is that's, that's, that's not, not the whole other charity. But yeah. Um, yes, I often have a pink mohawk in my films. <laughs> Rampage 800 asks a lot of questions. Uh, yeah. Um, he's a regular in my chat room. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's, he's probably over. All right. Our Rampage 1 through 799. They're all they're, taken. They're, yeah. Yeah. He's like, oh, this is the last one I'm going to try. <laughs> in Rampage, I like to play the lizard guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a lizard guy, there's yeah. a King Kong guy, and a wolf woman. A woman who turns into a wolf. Giant wolf. Right. Yeah. yeah. The lizard is my yeah, the favorite. Lizard's the best guy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The other thing to do is get on the edge of a building and punch at a a diagonal. Go all the way down the building right. and you destroy the building really fast. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. That's an important life lesson. Yeah. If you're playing rampage. Right. Right. Which you need reading to play <laughs> to know where to put the quarter. Or exactly. It says you put quarters in slots. Yeah. If you just put a, a quarter in every red glowing slot you see, eventually it will go awry. You totally can't play tabletop RPGs if you don't know how to read. That's yes, true. that is true. Thanks, cool. Well, thanks, guys, for sitting in with us. Sure. No problem. Go, uh, go rampage some of the other tables. I'm going to go eat some more <laughs> cupcakes. Nice. Good yeah. plan. <laughs> awesome. Cool. All right, guys, stick around. We're going to have other people chilling out with us. What's up, Gamer Vader, and welcome back. Oh, no, Sunria left again. Uh, oh, hi, Animus and Rampage. Thanks for sticking around. Richard Lowe and my wife, Amanda, who's probably not even paying attention and cooking or baking more awesome cupcakes that she will tweet pictures at me and make me jealous. Uh, uh, I guess I'm going to sit here and wait for Satine to bring over other people. Uh, very cool. Uh, once again, for the 430-some people watching, uh, we are at Meltdown Comics on Sunset in Los Angeles, raising money for Reach Out and Read, which is this awesome charity that lost its funding from the government two years ago. Um, so we're trying to help them out. We just want to get a thousand dollars. And oh, hey, we got someone coming up. Hey, how's it going? Good. How you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm Bruce Monix. Sam, oh, nice Bruce, to meet you. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Right. Good. How uh, was uh, how was the game? Oh, it was really fun. I was playing a cheerleader named okay. Ash, right. a cleric, and I couldn't hit anything, and all my spells didn't work. So I, yeah, we heard that was uh, <laughs> commonplace at your table. Yeah, no, our whole table was always screwing everything up. It was oh, good yeah. times. Yeah. You want to sit down here? Yeah. There's a box above your yeah, head. There's lots of room in here. Yeah, scoot on over. Get in. Yeah. Hi, yeah. gang. I'm Damien. Hey. I play Jordan, the Cavalier. Yeah, awesome. so he was the cool Jack guy, and I was the hot cheerleader. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's you know, it was fun. So typecasting. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's fine. You know. um, here, let's, let's bring this down a little. I'm going to handheld this one. Uh, so you guys had, like, obviously a, uh, a wardrobe meeting before the game to match colors, yeah? Yeah, no, we always, we do everything together. <laughs> Very cool. You were just going to start talking about your project. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so what, do you, what, do you got? what they want to, what everyone wants to hear about is I'm working on this uh, new web series called Pen and Paper and Laser Guns. Right. Yes, we yes. were talking about that earlier, me and Satine. Oh, you nice. Go on. Tell yeah, us. no, so Satine is one of the people I've cast so far. It also includes uh, Michelle Morrow, okay. who's a uh, personality with World of Warcraft, okay. and she's really awesome. Cool. So I shot this pilot with Michelle Morrow and Lisa Foyles that was like a test sort of, it was an idea of like, can I make this work essentially? Right. So the premise of the show is a group of people play a role playing game, yeah. real shocker here. Okay. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> but the big twist yeah. is that it's science fiction. Right. Well, actually, that is kind of like a twist for me. Yeah. Okay. I felt like it would be fun. I felt like fantasy yeah. is really out there, mm -hmm. and I wanted to do something science fiction, because that's sure. something I love. So I 
in the show, it's all these people playing this role-playing game, and then we also have these scenes in the sci-fi world, right. where we see them in like their full costumes with wigs, yeah. laser rifles. We see actual like blasts and scenes. Right. Shoot it full on. It's like totally sci-fi movie. Yeah. And then we cut to them at the table, hanging out in regular nerdy clothes, right. talking. And so that's do you have like a uh, sort of two different storylines going on, like an in-game quest, obviously? Mm -hmm. And then sort of the drama of like the players' lives. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool, There's cool. I'm building two worlds. One is a sci-fi world where they've opened a new portal right. to some other planet, and they go through and they uncover things that humanity was never meant to uncover. <laughs> and it's sort of like a Lovecraftian science fiction. Oh, cool. cool. And I thought that would be super fun. And then you also have this element where like ev the DM just broke up with her boyfriend, and now he's right. got a new girlfriend, and one person's trying to keep their job going right, and then another person just had a kid, and another person's got a wife who doesn't play, right. and it's all like the drama in their lives yeah. and what's going on. Very cool. So, but, uh, and now, so you shot the sort of uh, pilot teaser trailer sort of thing. Where, where can people see it? So you can see it, I believe, if you search pen and paper and laser guns, okay. you'll find it, or just Bruce Monick. Uh, dot com. I have links on my website, which is also a blog about role-playing games. How do you cool. spell Monic? M-O-N-A-C-H. Correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's done it. You've passed. Yes. Uh, well, very cool. Let, let's talk about the game that you guys actually played. Um, what was uh, what was the high point for you? Was it, was it the pantsing? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> the, the, well, I don't know if the pantsing was the <laughs> high point, but the entire element around the pan scene was the yeah. high point. Oh, yeah. 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 So the cast of characters, uh, for those that don't know, is very breakfast clubby. Mm -hmm. We had a nerd. We were, of course, the jock and the cheerleader. Right. There was some like a weird girl, his little brother, and the adult. Yeah. But there was a lot of dynamics going on between us and the nerd, played yeah. by uh, David, David Nett. David Nett. Right. Yep. And so he would do things that we thought were geeky or nerdy, and we'd make fun of him. And yeah. We just humiliate. Him. Humiliate him. Every time he screwed anything up, we were on on his case. We'd mock right. him. <laughs> Mocking him. Yeah. And then uh, he took the initiative to pants him yes. on multiple occasions. <laughs> I was I was sending notes to the DM. I, I'm gonna stand behind something and scare him. Or I'm gonna pull his pants out. I'm spifling his ear while he's trying to cast a spell. Mm -hmm. Silly shit like that. Yeah, you know, just fun. Just Did fun. you do any of the like uh, sneak up behind him and kneel down and somebody else pushes him over? We should have. We we didn't, what we though. did try to do was we were climbing down into a pit yeah. and everyone was sort of jumping and doing athletics and acrobatics. And he was a wizard, so he didn't really have the physical prowess. So we we'll got down you. and we were like, we'll catch you. Yeah. And we were totally going to drop him, but <laughs> then he just climbed down. Just the dwarf helped him. It was so sad. Yeah. Would have yeah, been wonderful. We just kind of ganged up on, on poor David. Yeah. And then at the end, he betrayed us to the dwarf, <laughs> the <laughs> evil dwarf. Yeah. He it's turned so on us and pledged yeah. his allegiance. To the undead In the dwarf. middle of the end of the fight, he gets down on his knees and goes, I pledge my allegiance to you. Fuck you, guy. Uh, you, I give me power. And then one round, like what, six seconds later, the guy, the well, dwarf didn't have the. He's like, no, no, wait, I'll, I'll give you the power after I deal with all your friends. <laughs> The best is like yeah. he's like everyone hates me. I'm I'm gonna join with you. Give me the power. And the dwarf's like, okay. The round goes. He doesn't have the power. And the dwarf's like, I'll get it to you later. <laughs> and he's he's just rejected by everyone. Yeah. Even when he betrays his yeah. entire party, yeah. the evil will not take him. Yeah. <laughs> he is pretty much the Cobra Commander story. I'm sh I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. And he turned into a supervillain at the end. Yeah. Yeah. yeah ran yeah. off and joined. Went them. off. Because of course we were gonna axe him the second the fight stopped. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, betraying everyone like that, oh, not yeah. okay. Yeah. He, was, he was dead, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was a dead man. <laughs> right. what, uh, what, what happened when the roof came in? I got crushed. Yeah. I got crushed. During I crushed. threw a dwarf. It was a dwarf toss. <laughs> Save the dwarf. <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah. you yeah. saved the dwarf. Um, I never actually went in the room. Huh? <laughs> but he just went, <laughs> oh, oh. As the cheerleader, I was just yeah. like, ooh, watch right out there, there guys. Oh, yeah. shit. I solved the puzzle with the sigils, and I was just like, step on those ones, guys. I'll stand over here. It'll be okay. Oh, nice. So, <laughs> kind of the brains of the operation. Yeah. You 
you know. That brains and the body. There you go. <laughs> you can pretty much play the game by yourself, is what you're saying. Check, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, w would you pick different characters if you had to play it again? <laughs> Only because I like up. to play different characters. Yeah. Yeah. I'd mix it up. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I had a really good time with Ash the cheerleader being goofy and ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, if I played again, I'd probably want to play Blaze the nerd. Yeah. I think that would be yeah, really yeah, fun, I was, actually. I was thinking about that. Too. <laughs> All right. yeah. Getting yeah. joked on by everyone. Yeah. <laughs> or just turn it around. Or just turn it around on them. Be more and clever and just yeah, be clever and smart yeah. and be yeah. like, oh, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who who was the most crucial character in the party? Uh, the the brother. Yeah, little the brother. little brother. The eight-year-old yeah. little brother. The eight-year-old little brother actually was the most yeah. dominating just, character. Yeah. Yeah. He got his stab on with everyone. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Little, little shit. Because, <laughs> <laughs> of course, like, li this, we had the most critical misses I've ever seen in a game. Oh, yeah. Like, we so, could oh. not land an attack. <laughs> on the other hand, the little brother is just, like, just stabbing away at everyone, just yeah. going crazy on him. My, my <laughs> one critical hit for the 20 was the pantsing. <laughs> oh, nice. That was a total waste, but it was awesome. <laughs> Awesome. Epic. Oh, also, you uh, when you snapped the neck oh, of the yeah, undead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was kind of yeah. fun. Uh, I, <laughs> I walked up on a, uh, I walked up on a, 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 a dead, uh, a body on the gallows that came to life, grabbed me, started choking me out, and everybody just stood there and watched. Yeah, uh, yeah. fuckers, awesome. bastards. Uh, and then, uh, and then uh, uh, did did a whole like crunch down maneuver and, and ripped his arm off and then yeah. beat him with it. Yeah, beat him yeah. with it. Yeah, ripped his arm off, pulled yeah. the whole gallows down basically, yeah. was, and then beat him to death with his own arm, as one would do. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's the only thing you can do. Well, that's awesome. All right, uh, so we have raised a couple hundred dollars for the charity so far. Somebody's actually already bought the uh, uh, Lords of Water down. So if you guys would sign the the cover of that, and uh, thanks for sitting in. Oh, hey. I think we're gonna we're gonna yeah, we we're going to just play the whole game, tell him if it's any good. Awesome. Uh, you probably don't want this. Uh, yeah, it's all right. It's <laughs> cool. Uh, very cool. Well, thanks for sitting in with me. Um, uh, where can people find you once again? Uh, BruceMonic.com, which is Bruce, M-O-N-A-C-H. And Twitter? And Twitter is fast as Bruce can. And uh, Pen and Paper and Laser Guns is the name of my show. Cool. Uh, and I am uh, TheComicBookNerd.com. Directing Batgirl Spoiled. You can find BatgirlSpoiled.com. And I'm also a comic book nerd at Twitter. At a comic book nerd. Because, you know, like you do. Because that's what I am. I'm a comic book nerd. Nice. Yeah. Totally easy. Do you guys have anything else you want to say to the audience? Or donate. Uh, donate. Donate, 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 donate. And thank you to the whoever bought this. Uh, Richard Lowe, who's actually still in the chat room. Richard yeah. Lowe, you are an awesome human being. Yeah, thank, thank you very you, much. Richard. That's awesome. Awesome. And I'm, I'm glad we could be here and help out with this charity. It, it has awesome. been signed, and uh, dude, uh, if you're in LA, let us know, and we will play with you. <laughs> I, I would play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that game looks Seriously. really cool. I want to check it out. Well, thank you guys for uh, sitting in with me. Thank you. And, uh, thank you for talking to me. All right. Thank you. Take it easy. Hey, Richard. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out. We're going to stick around for a little while longer. When uh, one of the other tables breaks up and finishes their game, we'll have the rest of those guys come in. I'm going to drink this water. <laughs> And for uh, those of you just joining us, we are down at um, get get Mandy back. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. Uh, we'll see. We have lots of other people coming up rampage. But uh, for those of you just joining us, we are at Meltdown Comics Celebrity Charity D and D event, and uh, we're just trying to raise only one thousand dollars. It's not that much. If people just give five bucks, everyone who's in this room, we would far exceed that goal. So go to uh, Melt Comics. Com and look for the donation information. You can uh, donate a minimum of one, uh, five, or if you want to get one of these awesome games, not Lords of Waterdeep, because that's bought already, but uh, one of the cool Dungeon Command games or one of the player handbooks from D&D, uh, &D, uh, just, just look for the, the text links on the Melt Comics link or website. Um, yeah, there's uh, the new player's handbook. There's uh, 
these D and D. Oh man, Menzo Brandon, City of Intrigue, which is like this cool drow drider uh, city. I don't know that if it actually. Oh well, there's like a map in here and everything. So yeah, that looks like a pretty um, extensive like little world supplement that's awesome. Like I love that stuff. Um, for ten dollars, I think it's ten dollars. Uh, so I got you right out of the way with one page. Uh, um, <coughs> Sonria, Rena, let me see if I can't get Satine over here, because I don't know so much about how that's all working, but, uh, persistence, maybe? Um, let me see. Hang on. Uh, but what, before I go to find her, uh, you can get the actual adventure that they're playing today, written by Keith Baker, and you can only get it in the next few hours, uh, like hour and a half, uh, for a $10 donation at uh, MeltComics.com. Uh, I'll be right back, guys. <laughs> Table two? It's just a table one. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, do you know the answer on anything about getting into table one? Okay, sorry, Mike. Have you restarted your system? I'm so sorry about this. But yeah, sometimes you have to restart your system when you're using things like this. I so sorry. I can't believe table two was done so much earlier. I know. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, 22,000 views. That's hot. That's hot. Um, well, we need to turn that into... Oh, yeah, so read that. Somebody's having a problem. Oh, yeah. You're standing in front of it. Right, right where the cursor is. They're having problems getting into table one. Yeah, table number one. Hi, Animus 666. Something like this happened to you. Yeah, this is Hollywood. But you know what? You have to make your good time because I'm not from here. I'm from San Francisco. And wherever I go, I make a fun time. And this is the fun time. And I'm showing it to you. So that's really cool. Fun time. Hey, hey. <laughs> right on. Uh, Sonria, we are going to figure this out for you. New Zealand. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you guys have a really cool comic book convention, don't you? I think. Yeah, I lived in Australia. Did you know that I lived in Australia? Stuff. What? I lived in Australia. I lived when? in Sydney for like six months, 2007. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really fun. Huh. Uh, New Zealand has strip clubs. I, I heard that they have strip clubs because I know people who strip there. Everyone has strip clubs, except for like Utah. Actually, the coolest strip club I ever went to was in Perth, which is really? the city farthest what away makes from... makes it a cool strip club? Well, everyone was Everyone's chill, and nobody fought. Nobody fought each other. Oh. It was cool. It was like... And I did this, like, crazy fire... Or, like, um, the stage performance yeah. with this guy. It was, like, an S&M thing, and then um, it, we burned my skin. It was really, I mean, we didn't actually burn it. We used, like, 70% like or whatever. Yeah, no, not no, kerosene. No. no, you cannot take the strippers home. Hey, uh, Thanks, Sonria. Sorry to make you donate again, but you know, it's going to a really good cause. And um, yeah. Meow. What's our so, total? Do we know what the total's at? Uh, we know it is 426 and an 426? hour. 426? Wow. No. Huh? No, it is 426. That's not how much we Yeah. Know. Oh, so we've got time. Like, time is ticking, folks. Time is ticking. We need a lot more donations. We need... Aw, oh, thanks, Animus. Did you have PayPal? Because you can totally PayPal me. And I will send it directly to the thing, Majiggy. 
You donate via PayPal. Yeah, but um, the PayPal donation is is only like five dollars or ten dollars. But if you want to donate more than that, you can donate to Satine SF at Yahoo. No, you don't need a, a credit card for PayPal. You can actually direct direct it to your bank account. Yeah, they kind of already have to have that set up, I think. Yeah, you have to have it set up because it takes a couple days. Right. But if you don't have that, maybe I'll do it again. Just recommended the app. Huh. Hmm. We have we have people troubleshooting right before our eyes. Yeah, just just read the chat, guys. <laughs> I like how we're just sitting here watching. <laughs> I'm really sorry, I'll read Sanria. what they were saying. You yeah. may have to refresh the page once or twice. What uh, what browser are you using? Because use a different one. <laughs> Yeah, don't use uh, Firefox. Yeah, don't use Firefox. Or use or Chrome. Yeah, Chrome is or pretty I good. I like Safari too. I don't know. That's stupid. For sticky, Safari seems to work good for me. Oh, really? Um, oh, okay. But yeah, I, I would try Chrome. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> um, can you, maybe you could go and get people to sign this. Sign this? Just, yeah, just have everybody that's up and running around. That'd be really great. Yeah, use this or a regular pen. This will bleed through. Um, regular pen. Do we have one of those? I threw one somewhere. Okay. Somebody somewhere has a pen. Hi guys. How's it going? Um. Yeah. Oh, it sounds like another table just finished. It looks like table number three, maybe. I don't know. So we're actually walking around. Sam's walking around right now. Um, you can purchase this adventure, this module, this Keith Baker original module, for ten dollars. Um, it has all the characters. It has pictures of all the characters, which I drew. They're just sketches, but they're fun. Um, you can purchase this for ten dollars, the PDF. Or um, I'm not sure if you're in the chat room or if you can hear this at all. Um, maybe we can auction this off for the highest bidder gets it. Uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure a way to like get this fundraiser kicking off because we only have, I don't know, I'm going to imagine $200 and we need $1,000. We're not even close. Okay, we're like almost close. We're not e no, no, we're not even close. So um, donate $5, donate $10. Hey, Justin, do you know if um, uh, we have a donate button that it, people can just donate whatever? Okay. It's only five dollars. No, it's only five. They could only program it to five dollars. So otherwise, go directly to PayPal. Type in S A T I N E. That's my name, Satin S F, like San Francisco, at Yahoo.com, and just donate whatever you can donate. Um, otherwise, just donate five dollars a lot like a bunch of times, or donate $10, buy the PDF for your friends, buy the, you know, whatever. You can also buy this um, this supplement. I don't even know how to say this. It's Menzoberanzan, Menzoberanzan, City of Intrigue. It's got like a drow Spider-Man on it, which is so awesome. And you can buy this for, I think, uh, 40 bucks. Yeah, that's it. PayPal said TNSF at Yahoo. Um, v4. What's V4? I don't know what V4 is, Animus. Oh, thanks, Animus. It's very sweet of you. Um, you can actually see my artwork on my YouTube channel, so sat youtube.com slash satinephoenix. I am going through all the monsters manuals and um, drawing the monsters. I think I'm going in alphabetical order right now or not. I don't know. But I'm drawing them as women, and so like I did a beholder that I haven't released yet and it's like one big eye with eyelashes and a big lips and all the little eyes have um, eyelashes and then there's just boobs just tons of boobs underneath thanks yeah I really like 
like it. I tried to do one. Um, Keith Baker's wife wanted me to draw a hippocampus, which is, sounds funny, but it's like this half horse, half fish thing. They're like these underwater steeds. And um, yeah, I started drawing it, but then we got all wrapped up with throwing this event, so I, um, I, I haven't been able to post it yet. I haven't been able to ink it, so yeah, but it'll be here probably Monday or so, whatever. A slad. Oh, okay, so we've got uh, 400 live viewers right now. We've had 22,000 session views, and you're here at Meltdown Comics with me, Satine Phoenix, and Sam Proof, who's running around doing something right now. Um, we're raising money for a charity called Reach Out and Read, and it's to help get books into pediatrician offices so that um, children from the ages of six months to six years old can have books to learn how to read faster. They did the study where um, they found out that the younger you are, um, by when you pick up a book even, uh, the more successful you are in life. It sounds really funny and really simple. My six-year-old niece can't really read. I'm trying to like get her into it. So the younger you get them into it, the, the easier. Um, I have a, a friend whose kid's been, he picked up his first book at three months old and I've been watching him. He's like over a year old now and he his mom takes him to art galleries. He can understand the concept of like story and he'll like pick up, a, it's really creepy actually, but totally awesome. He picks up a book and you can see his eyes go from one page to another page and he can really comprehend and that's what we're trying to do and Dungeons and Dragons is about reading and absorbing and comprehending and then sharing the story that you create around uh, what you absorbed with your friends. So it's story time, it's reading based and um, we're trying to raise money for this charity, Reach Out and Read, ROR Los Angeles dot org. Um, you can get... Huh? Meltdown. Oh, yeah, so we've got... Where, where's all my paperwork? Okay, so the... Come sit down. Okay. Uh, so this is Sam Proof. Hey guys, what's going on? Yeah. How you doing? I'm back. Yeah, so we're here hosting this. Um, so table number one, we have Adam Levermore, Neil Fisher, Brian Vance, Jason Charles Miller, Sandra Doherty, and Matthew Mercer. All... Right, Matt Mercer, who is uh, the voice, uh, one of the voice actors from uh, Thundercats. Uh, uh, Sandra Doherty has a, a channel on the Nerdist. Yep. Um, sex nerd Sandra. She's right. pretty fancy. Right. Uh, Jason Charles Miller. He is lead singer to Godhead, which is pretty right on. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. He's been at every one of these. It's pretty great. A lot of these people have been here yeah. several times. Yeah. This is what the fourth, third, or third, 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 fourth. Third, third, third. Yeah, we've done a couple third, of first. these. <laughs> right. And uh, at all least, to the same charity. Yeah. And 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 a lot of these people are repeat from uh, you know the last couple of years, which yeah. is awesome. Uh, Neil Fisher from uh, Sushi Girl and uh, Adam Levermore. Adam Levermore, he, I just watched a uh, YouTube of his. I know he does like all the artwork for um, Will Wheaton's tabletop game, and then he did oh, like okay. a bunch of like Battlestar um, yeah. posters, like uh, propaganda posters. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, awesome. like totally good. Go and Google nice. these people. They're cool. totally awesome. Yeah, yeah. So that's a table number one. They're still going. You can pay five dollars and watch them, or just pay five dollars to support them. Yeah. You don't. Oh, and yeah, Matt Mercer is also Leon Kennedy from Resident Evil. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he does he's, a lot. He's the voice of uh, yeah. Oh, something happened over there. That was like table one is getting close to the end, if not there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's that table. That's the table we, uh, we were just talking about. Yeah. We just got rowdy. <laughs> yeah, and so Keith Baker is um, running that. Yeah, he's the DM for that table. And, and he uh, wrote He is the, the creator of Penance, which is the scenario everyone is playing. They're all playing the same scenario, the same characters. Uh, but probably with vastly different results. Yeah, va we say vastly because table two finished like an hour and a half early. Yeah. <laughs> um, so right now, table three, which you can still go to, uh, 
We have uh, Ramon Govea, who he's a producer that's just got his fingers in all sorts of stuff. You have to Google him. He's yeah. phenomenal. So he's a dungeon master. You got Sax Carr, right? Who is a producer on the Batgirl Spoiled and uh, which does, Marisha does Ray is on. Who's She's also at that table. Yeah. Yeah. So she is Batgirl. Right. Yeah. Spoiled Batgirl. That's a good Batgirl. Um, Tracy King and Bo Ryan. The nerd Tra power couple. Yeah, they yeah. are. I mean, look at them. They're so <laughs> perfect for each other. Yeah. Uh, Travis Oates, who's the voice of Piglet. Um, Jonathan London, he was here. He just left, but he he's uh, at the Geekscape. Of Geekscape. Yeah, he's yeah. the man behind. Yeah, he is Geekscape. Yeah. Uh, Geekscape.net, which is like just a cool website for all things geek fan based. You know, it's just. Yeah, we have a lot of cool people yeah. here. Um, yeah, the table two, which you can't go there, but you can still donate. You still have till 6 yeah. p.m. to donate. Right. Um, we had uh, uh, Coop play there. Mandy Morbid, Zach Smith, and Zach wrote Vornheim, which is an amazing supplement. It has like a bunch of cool random chart rollers. Right. Um, yeah, Coop has his uh, photography out in the Tashin book, but he's like this. He's awesome. An awesome artist. Awesome he's got this like cool, sexy devil. It's very, it really, he doesn't know yeah. this, but it totally formed me as a young adult. Oh, woman. yeah? Oh, yeah, for wow. sure. I actually painted myself as a devil girl. Once for Christmas. Right. I could see that, sure. You did too? A devil girl? No, no, I didn't do I could see you doing that. So you're um, devilish. Yeah, so David Nett from Gold. Yeah, David Nett from Gold, who talked to us earlier. Yeah. Well, we talked to this whole table of people. But yeah. yeah, we did. Um, uh, Bruce, I cannot pronounce his name. Monarch. Monarch. Bruce uh, Monarch. Is, uh, is now working on uh, paper pens and lasers. Paper pens and lasers. It. And it is so awesome. Yeah, I want to see that trailer it? now. He talked about it, yeah. Hey, I sent it to you. Can you run it? I already did. It was on, it was, um, there was two links on that one page. Um, it was like the second. Yeah. It's, um, it's pen, paper, and laser guns. Or laser. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, cool. Yeah. Are, is the table done? It's only a couple minutes long. Maybe we could run it. Yeah. Yep. We're already... Oh, okay. See, now that helps. <laughs> okay. Got it. Oh, okay. We'll wait, like, five, we'll wait a couple minutes for you to get we'll, up we'll there. Because we just went through the whole thing. Yeah, we, we got, like, four names. Everybody at table three and... So cool. We're gonna we're, we're gonna check out this. that uh, the the, move the pen, thing. pen paper laser gun thing. I'm gonna move it. Move the thing. Um, so yeah, uh, we're gonna check that trailer out in a minute. But the, uh, so everyone who was at table three, the last table, or actually this was table two, and we said whatever. Hold on. Reset. Rewind. Right. Coop, who's an amazing artist. <laughs> Um, actress Mandy Morbid, Zach Smith, uh, David Met from uh, Gold the Web Series, which is an RPG web series, pretty cool. Uh, Bruce Monarch. Am I doing this one? Or am I doing this one? Yeah. Uh, right. Damien Brewer. And Damien Brewer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh. What happened? That I am not sure. Yeah. Uh, Maybe you can go run and get them. Okay, I'll do that. We are having technical difficulties. But if you donate, then we won't. But it's frozen. No, I'm oh. So, it's just us again. So we've already sold the Lords of Waterdeep, and we have Table 2 signatures on it. Bam! And, um... Yeah, so we only have a couple more box sets to, to sell, and it will totally help us, and you get something. And that's like one of the most important things to a lot of people, is that if they're gonna donate, they get something back, right? Well, this is your chance to donate and get something back. We also have the Player's Handbook. Boom, all, is this has like gold? 
and silver and and embossing and it's really fancy so buy this for 40 bucks and we will all sign it and we will send it to you i will send it to you personally um it's the 3.5 it's not fourth edition um yeah so donate 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 stapler donate <laughs> So I guess um, I'll tell you a little bit about the charity again. I don't even know if this thing's running anymore. I'm just going to keep talking. Aw, hey Animus, maybe I could talk to you. I don't do really well sitting here by myself. I need like people to talk to. Um, yeah, I don't play 3.5. Actually, I play a little bit of everything. I, I used to play second edition. Hi, Richard. <laughs> Cool, so you guys should Twitter. Twitter everybody, tell them all about it. Hashtag CCDD. Um, sorry, it's really loud in here. It's very distracting. I wish I had headphones or something. Um, yeah, just Twitter, Facebook, tell everybody you only have a couple more. Um, uh, we have like an hour and 15 minutes left before we um, are out of here. So make sure that people donate. Go call your friends, tell them to donate $5. Or say, I got Satine Phoenix's email address. You should totally donate money to it. Because, <laughs> you know, it's for the babies. It's to help babies. Um, yeah, so, let's see. I'm just going to sit here, and I'm going to Twitter. It is a noble cause. I mean, like, seriously, I talked to this woman who runs uh, Reach Out and Read, and she was talking about how they cut the funding about two years ago, federal funding for them, and then last year, they only had one person throw a charity event for them. And we've done two this year. So the first one was in January, and this is the second one. So that's why I'm really, we raised, like, a couple hundred bucks last time, but that's just not enough. You know, like, we're trying to, like, do something really, really good here for our future. And people can debate and and do all these, say all these political things, but we're actually making things happen, and we're really trying to raise money for them. Um, looks like another table is done. So I'm going to go grab some people really quick and have them talk about their experiences. All right. Did you finish it, figure that out? Yeah, he says it's fine. Uh, let's go to the, the trailer for Pen's Paper and Weasel. Oh. Pens, paper, and laser guns. Ready, set, meow. 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 I feel like I've been failing endurance checks for hours. Oh, honey, you'll be fine. Location of the artifact confirmed. Take her out. No, I think I'll try the diplomatic route. Never heard of you. Cassandra Deary, Crescent Service in the Martian Special Forces, despite her father's wishes. And we can sell her back to her father. Or anyone else who's interested. You can try to be diplomatic at any time now. Shut up! Hey! Who the hell are you talking to? Okay, let's just calm down and talk this out. Ah, uh, that's a one. Uh, um... Rachel, turn on your field generator and stealth 10 feet over. I do that? Sorry for her. Hmm. Ah. I'm prone. 
Shoot him from the ground. The mods aren't that bad. I'm taking a short rest. The Adventures of Commander James G. Sheraton in space. Exciting space action. Adventure on Alien World. Daring sword battle. In a galactic romance. Starring Henry Steele as Commander James G. Sheridan. Rose Kelly as Keldara, Space Princess of the Omega Quadrant. Chapter One, A Shadow Rise. Now, who is this lovely creature? Why, she's- Princess Keldara Zello of the Amiga Quadrant. That's pretty forward, for a woman. On my planet, men and women are equal. Next thing you know, my engineering staff's gonna be all dames. <laughs> I'd like to see the gams on those snipes. Sounds like you come from a very different world. I'd like to discuss the matter further. Perhaps over dinner? Looks like everything's changed now. Golly, I'll see. Join the party. All right, I'll go with the oh. Yeah, you have to get really low because that's our camera over there, and we have a lot of like things going on. Our camera, us. not this camera. So I mean, you're gonna look here, but oh, you can see. Oh, I never see. mind. You're good. You can stand. Well, I think we're all good if this is. I was just saying that's that's the window. So that's what you look like for real. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there's a delay. Yeah. Oh. It's crazy. <laughs> Technology and everything. Okay, so um, yeah, guys. Hi. Welcome. Yeah. You guys hello. All play. Hi, folks. <laughs> hello, hello. Hello. So, who, who, who were you? Uh, well, my name is Neil Fisher. I'm producer of Sushi Girl, and I uh, run a company here in Los Angeles that makes movies like Resident Evil and Silent Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so cool. I love your reaction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, hello, my name is Marisha Ray, and I am actually playing Batgirl in the new web series, Batgirl Spoiled, that just launched this week. That's so cool! Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Good times. It's really times. tantalized my nerdiness. It's so <laughs> cool. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bo Ryan, uh, the face of Rad Nerd, and uh, the cool guy at Machinima everyone loves. I think they I think they love me. I saw it on the internet. Yeah. It, it must be true. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Get in here, boys. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm Matthew Mercer. Uh, I'm a actor, a voice actor, known for Tigra and Thundercats and Leon Kennedy and Resident Evil 6 and Damnation. Uh, 
Yeah. Like yeah. keep it in the family. That's what you do, yeah. man. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> you guys know each other, right? No, we, we uh, just okay. met. Okay. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. 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 You make, you're making connections. You bring he people together. He was the dwarf and I was the emo. Yeah. Or, yeah. No, no, no. Oh, you're, that's right. You're a fellow weird girl. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Did you like that? My little drawing? Yeah. I, know, yeah, I, I, knew, I kept trying to do that, but I had a haircut last <laughs> night. I'm like, oh, <laughs> damn it. No, it was fun. It was a great adventure. So tell me about your guys' experience of it. Because actually, I played this at Comic-Con at the Omni. Oh, oh nice. cool. <laughs> oh, awesome. But yeah. I want to hear your, you know, experience. Yeah. Oh, and this is Tracy King, everybody. Hi. Hi. Horror, Hi. horror producer extraordinaire. Great horror producer, creator, actress. Yes. It's, um, my goal in life is to be one of the top 13 women in horror. I'm uh, probably... You're, you're getting there. I'm going to knock off Jamie Lee Curtis or Shannon Lark. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, ladies. I love you, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how it is. Yeah, it is. Okay, so that's what you guys were. What, who were you guys today? Oh. I was, I was Ang uh, Angus the old man. The old Dwarf, trying to keep his pack of children together. Exactly. And I, yeah, I, I played Autumn, the weird girl. It's kind of kind of depressed, and she hears voices. Yeah. That's sad. It's a, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't really like her. I played Ash, the cheerleader, yeah. and I made people happy with my tits, my ass, <laughs> panties, and mama's milk. By the way, I. <laughs> That's disturbing. I, I didn't tell you in the game, but uh, on my like character sheet, I had to write down that you did something to me in my in the past that you don't remember, like you picked on me, and I said that you put a ketchup packet in my chair and then I sat on it unknowingly, and it made it look like I had my period all over my pants all day. So you're the reason why I wear black from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, I also told my sister she is adopted. You did. Yeah. So. Kind of a bitch. Wow. Yeah. Kind of a bitch. Actually, I did that in real life. I actually did tell my sister in real life. <laughs> <laughs> and I was a cheerleader in real life. So <laughs> that sucks. So you're really having flashbacks. Yeah. Right. But the, yeah, I was an so asshole. role play is it's just <laughs> play. <laughs> yeah. Just play. Uh, <laughs> you call it's it called regressing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I like yeah. that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'm much nicer. <laughs> look over, Tracy I'm just has a nosebleed. She's just yeah. like, oh, God, oh. Yeah. No, we, we had a good time. Uh, somehow we ended up with, like, most of the cats having one eye. I think all of us knew one eye bomb. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We had, like, three, three people putting cats with one eyes. <laughs> yep. um, and they need to be burned. They need to be burned. We had a lot of, a lot of yeah. bad cats. Uh, we had an epic final confrontation where, like, our paladin went down and then was possessed by the, the main bad guy. And then, like, like everyone was just, just wow. like you summoned this. Uh, well, you were burning guys from the outside, yep, and then yep, you set yep. him on fire with the flame veal. Yep. And then uh, our goth girl had the uh, big old sort of loneliness, and then struck him down, and then all the shadows poured out of him. And then, right in the final moment, like my dwarf ran up and used his action point to slam our pal in the chest with the blunt side of the axe, grabbed his chest, oh. and told him, for all of his dwarven ancestors, that the spirit has, uh, has you know, forsaken to get out of his body. And they all appeared and took him away, and. And then, and then, and then our, our paladin, who was then soulless yeah. and dead, the cheerleader went over and used her action point to heal him and brought him back to life with a kiss. And, and yep, and hugged him back to life. Hugged him back yeah. to life. And then they, then six, we jumped six months later where she's now pregnant with this yeah. baby, yeah. Broke, broke being chast. And uh, so we're going to have Mama's Milk in our, in our story, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our, our little, what was his, his name? Uh, Junior, we were falling down the, the catacomb thing, and he fell on my titties. <laughs> oh, I cradled him. Yes, yeah. It's turned into a Japanese yeah. anime yes. somehow. <laughs> we had a very vulgar game. We did. It was very vulgar. And our, our paladin died because he had a rock fall on his head. Oh. Yeah. But we drew up a nice yeah. little break yeah. marker. So Aww. I think we were, yeah. yeah. So Wait, did he die in the ceiling pod? Yes. Yeah. Are you serious? Because that's like what happened with the Well, he had to leave. Uh, so we just kind of okay. oh, We just kind of nailed it. Oh, goodbye. 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 Oh, go
fighting his brother, and his brother was saving me. So in turn, he saved two yeah. people. Yeah, he held up his shield to use it as cover, valiant, yeah. valiantly, and uh, sacrificed himself more or less. It's good. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And I, I had an exciting moment. I rolled a natural twenty on my like big daily power of, of, oh, yeah. of, the, of the game and did max damage and it was awesome. That's awesome. It's yeah. like the first natural twenty I've rolled in a year. I totally <laughs> wanted to play. Right. No. Oh. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. character did you play? Um, I played the cheerleader. Nice. Yeah, so it was uh, Ramon and George. Ah. And so we played it at the Omni. So I was the girl, and then like, Ramon was the older brother, and George was the little brother. And so he, like, the little brother was trying to compete with the older brother for my affection, and he, they got really, we all were really into it. We were kind of literally role-played the entire time. And to the point where I haven't role-played consecutively for a game in a long time that I was like, So how did you, you know Jordan? <laughs> what did you do in, with Jordan in the past? What did I do? Did you, have to fill, did you fill out the questionnaires? I don't remember doing Like something about you, you did something at school together. We know what you would have done. Oh, you know, I think he changed the questions. Oh, dang. Oh, interesting. Yeah. All right. I like that. Keeps it fresh. Yeah. 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 It's good. Yeah. Keith Biggers. Yes. Keith, get in here. This is your game. Our D&D. Our DM. Your adventure. <laughs> yeah, so hey, you want to... So we're trying to raise more money. We only have like 200 or 300 dollars, and we have like an hour left. Okay. So um, I don't know how to do this, except for... Oh, yeah, so I... Um, so as I said, I, I produced a movie called Sushi Girl. Uh, Sushi Girl has you know, Mark Hamill, Tony Todd, Noah Hathaway, James Duvall, Andy McKenzie. Me? Oh, no, it doesn't. Uh, Never mind. Sonny Chiba. Uh, okay. Michael Bean, Danny Trejo, and Jeff Fahey. Uh, yeah, 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 and so we have... It's coming out in November, and I just I just figured you know um, we've got a, I have these T-shirts uh, in the in the car, and I was like, why not? You know, I mean, I, I heard that we needed a little bit of help, so it's not. I mean, it's it's nerdy in that you know Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker, you know Noah Hathaway from Neverending Story. That you know they you know they're nerdy. You know, it's so you know so yeah. So here you go. Um, so I mean, I guess um, if the idea would be, I guess. Uh, if if uh, we have people that order our game, or I mean, I'm not sure how it's working. Are they ordering one individual games or all games? If or they want to donate right now, uh -huh. they can donate to my email at PayPal. Okay. So Satine S F S A T I N E S F like San Francisco. Yeah, sure. I mean, I've got. You can donate directly there. How much do you think? Uh, I don't know. I mean, like maybe twenty-five dollars for do a donation. Oh, you know? Keith is doing it right so, now. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah we have a large. Yep. There it is, yep. a large. Yep. Yep. So, so we, we have different sizes. Twenty-five dollars to read up. Hey, hey. right now. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, twenty-five dollars uh, donated to reach out and well. Satine, S A T I N E S F, like San Francisco, at yahoo.com. Um, just go to PayPal, put that in, and donate $25. I have my phone behind me, it will buzz and tell me whether you donated or not. And I will send this to you directly. We'll sign it if that's even cooler, right? Yeah, that's yeah, pretty we cool. Can, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, in my secret pocket. <laughs> it's true. I, will, I definitely want to, to get on in Twitter, you know, to let people know, oh, yeah, hey, get on exactly. now. Exactly, that's what I want to uh, do. Too. We have that still that we're going to. Yes. So that's like 20 bucks, right? Is that what you said? Uh, this? Yeah, I, I, I think. Uh, oh, I was about to say, that's that special. So yeah, I mean, this is, is the adventure. It has everything. It even has, uh, you know, the extra sort of, uh, you know, art and such. That's cool. uh, It's signed by everyone who played it and, of course, me. Um, and see, if we do it quick, we could get people to play, sign their characters that they play. Oh, yeah.
should show our shoes together. Have you seen mine? Yeah. I'm safe. I was looking at them earlier today. I was pretty impressed. Yeah. Well, they're pretty good shoes. Bam. Uh, like is that, that snake skin? It is. Well, it's not real, but it looks uh, like it. Well, this is actually real. Look at these. Can you guys see it's these? Real. <laughs> it's real. Oh, yeah. Someone killed this thing. And not you. Not me. I didn't kill it. Yeah, we're never getting on PETA. No. <laughs> but I will. I will. If you dare me to. Yeah. Oh, ask Justin. Oh, okay. So, um... Isn't there a power strip right running underneath it? Oh, boy. Okay, so, um, who did you guys play? Or I played... I need a Twitter that we need more money. I played Junior. And I played Angus. Too. Awesome. Yeah, Junior was fun. I got to do lots of little stealthy. Uh, are we on still? Or yeah, no, it's I doing that thing. Too. Okay. Well, there's your problem right there, Dell. Oops, sorry, Dell. Mike Dell will never endorse me now. Hey, uh, my truck is great. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I think we're gonna do a video for that. Maybe. For a video, if you'd like to. You're not the first person that's told me that. Uh, I'm assuming it's Talisman. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, you guys had the ideas yeah, together. Okay, got really it. quite impressed by it, so. Thanks. Um, but yeah, I, I, thought, I thought Junior was definitely one of the better characters, I think, in many ways. Yeah, I think Junior, you know, because there's, in a way, you've got free reign because as Junior, you can kind of screw up, and it's okay because you're a 14-year-old yeah. kid or however old he is. Well, it's good, it's good duality because the character is like sort of a, uh, you know, a goof who like makes mistakes and whatnot, but it's also like one of the most effective party members by a long margin. And so he's, uh, you know... Well, I was able to do a lot of like first encountered strikes, so I got to use my backstabbing uh, almost every time, which was nice. And there's actually a lot of um, uh, combat advantage to be doled out by the, the players. Like they, almost everybody had combat advantage related abilities, so you could really feed into Junior's uh, stuff. Angus was a lot less dynamic, but was way more fun to play. Like I loved being Angus. I played him as Sam Elliott, so I did the Sam Elliott voice the whole time. Uh, I was, I was, I, for some reason I decided Angus was the cowboy from uh, The Big Lebowski. It seemed right. I just saw that um, Jeff Bridges is playing Stagecoast, and, and the name of his band is it's Jeff Bridges and the Abiders. Wow. Because the dude abides. That is know? really The cool. dude does abide. Yeah, it was, no, it was fun. And, and like Angus was weird. Like for the, I, I, I acted much less than anybody else because my initiative was so bad that a lot of combats resolved before I got involved with him. And then in the cave -in, did you guys have a cave -in? Yeah, we had a cave -in. Yeah, in the We had cave -in, a cave -in. I stepped into the door frame, so I didn't even have to roll. So in every sense, oh, I, so cool. I, um, I basically was not. And like the, the party started ragging on me for not being involved with anything. And oh, even when they were in the traps room, I knew I wasn't going to do well, so I stood in the doorway. And they were like, why don't you actually play the game? And they're like, what? I'm surviving and none of you are. You know, so it was fun. Cool. Yeah, because you're... Oh. You're awesome. Thank you. I'm a fan of yours, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, well, let's see. You know... The thing is, is on my music side, it's less nerd cred than my voice acting side. So, you know, on the music side, Jason Charles Miller, um, I've had, uh, yeah, what up, Richard Lowe? Did you sign this? No, I'm about to sign it. Yeah. Um, obviously, Godhead in my band for years and years and years. Uh, and then on the voice acting side, I'm in Diablo 3, um, uh, Guild Wars 2. I play four main uh, NPCs. Um, yeah, I mean, I worked on that game for like two and a half years. That is so cool. Uh, uh, Street Fighter versus Tekken, uh, Super Street Fighter 4, I'm trying to think of uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, oh I just did, yeah, yeah, I was in like six episodes of that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I played like six different villains. Wow. But uh, in one episode, they actually made an animated version of me. When have you? Did you see this? Yes, I did. 
so when he goes to prison, oh when he goes God. to prison, that I'm in, so awesome. I'm in the prison with him. <laughs> like you got a bald head, yeah. some nice tattoos. You're gonna fit in real well around here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was I'm fun. only totally. I'm more of a fan now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, before I just liked you as a person. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> the deeper you get into you as a person, the better it gets. Like <laughs> every aspect. <laughs> That's go deep. Go deep. Go deep. Down deep. Yeah. Richard Lowe, where are you? Where do you reside? Where do you live, Richard Lowe? Emotionally. No, no, just just where you are. Because he's super happy right now. He's got I know, you've been on the whole time. Yeah. Oh, hey, well, you're going to be glad, Richard Lowe, because I'm going to be at Anime St. Louis in April. Uh, I just, I just actually got the contract for it or whatever, so I'm going to be a guest at Anime St. Louis, so you'll have to come and put a face to your name and be like, I'm Richard Lowe with my Google Plus logo. So, Richard Lowe's a really cool looking guy. I bet you he is. I'm sure he is. You know. <laughs> He's alone. He is. Let me sign that thing right now. Yeah. So I don't, is there a, some sort of marker? By the way, I want that. That's really cool. Like, I want to get this game. Because I love Waterdeep when I was a kid. Like, the whole Waterdeep campaign. I had the map. I had all, I had everything. So. Oh, my God. 10,000 followers on Twitter. That's <laughs> cool. <laughs> exactly 10,000. Just right now. <laughs> yeah, because it has days and going up and down because of the whole porn thing. But, um, because you were in porn? No, because I wanted them to put condoms in porn. Oh, and people didn't like that? Oh, hell no. Wow. But that's a different, that's a different podcast. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for donating. For those of you who did, and uh, Richard Lowe, who has donated the most so far, obviously this is 60 bucks. He's totally handed us like that a That is big badass. Thing. So is it a board game or what? It's huge, dude. Can we look at it even though Richard yeah. already got it? And Anima says it's a fun game. Hey. So it's 5-12. Can you, um, can you take text Francisco and find out how much uh, we got? Francisco! Yeah, he's the, the brains behind a lot of this. Yeah, it's, it's here. It's all gonna okay. You, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> oh. It's like Monopoly. Oh, Look at all these buildings. Yes. It's like Carcassonne. Oh, and is it like friggin' and Risk? And Risk. It's like Risk. Oh, yeah. I used to play Risk in Look summer camp. Oh. Hell yeah. Yeah. I can almost see it. I can see it. That's so cool. So you got a 40 second view of that because we were waiting to see it on the screen. Are we really 40? No, we're not 40 seconds behind. We're like, if anything, we're like 10 seconds behind. Um, let's go. Sax, tell us about you. You gotta go? Um, I, no, no, no. Well, Marisha needs me. I'm Sax Carr, and I'm a geek comedian, and I am the creator of the Batgirl Spoiled web series, um, which I created with Marisha Ray. So cool. Um, and I, yeah, I've been doing geek comedy for a long time. I've played Comic Con. I'm one of a few comedians actually who's ever played, like, in the floor of Comic Con and at the Magic Castle. I'm, the, I'm probably the only comedian that has both oh those my credits. Because, like, yeah. when I was a member of the Magic Castle, I wanted to. What's that? No, no, I've only, I, I'm one of, like, two people. People in the world who's ever done stand up at the Magic Castle, and uh, I don't know. I mean, like I'm just saying they don't they don't al normally allow it. And so I played the I played the Palace of Pres uh, Prestidigitation um, as a stand up, and then I played the floor of Comic Con to like six thousand people, which was fun. Oh my god! And so my team, comics and comics, travels around. We do conventions. If uh, if you got a convention near you, you want us to go to, give us a, give me a tweet at at Sax Car. We'll see if we can't make it happen. And uh, I'm also partnered with this guy on the Pizza Games and Zombies. Podcast. I, my friends are really awesome. <laughs> yep. I'm very proud of my friends. Hey, you had me at pizza. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. We well, get most people <laughs> at pizza, and then games rolls everybody in, and then if we don't have you, then the zombies will seal the deal. Yeah, it's the yeah, it's the it's the puppies, kittens, and boobs of uh, podcasts. And we, um, I also have like seven other podcasts. One called Fandom Planet. Uh, one called This Is Really Happening, which is about weird news, like the guy who ate a cockroach and died in Florida. What? But it's Florida, so that makes sense because Florida's horrible. Um, <laughs> and except, yeah, except for the cool die. places. Except for the cool people in it. But they're just trying to get out. I almost moved to Miami. Why? 
B -b booty. Oh, this true. Bo booty everywhere. <laughs> That's true. If you enjoy booty and meth, Florida is for you. Um, I uh, yeah, it's been fun, and then, then you know I've been playing D and D. Uh, I'm on your as yet unreleased oh my YouTube gosh. series, it's, the Sacking yeah. Phoenix 360. And I gotta say, I, I've really done talked about it yet. I've done a bunch of these, but that's by far one of the most charming games that's ever been put to film. So when that comes out, people are gonna be really impressed. I dungeon mastered it. Yeah. It looks so good. It's a, it's it's the one that you were supposed to be at, but you yeah. didn't make it that one time. Yeah, I, I, I filled in for you. <laughs> I had to wear the hat. No, she uh, she was the dungeon master, and there was uh, Dodger and myself and Chloe Dykstra <laughs> and Zach Smith. Oh, she had to travel. Everyone's traveling because of the con and other things. Yeah. yeah, and we play the game with a with a. Well, we, I won't I won't uh, ruin the conceit. The point is, it's a full on D and D game that we all play and in I'm character. Like, and I'm and, animating and she, it. Yeah, and she's animating it. It's really amazing, and it's super. It's a lot fun. of work. Yeah, but it looks great. I and what we to show you? Yeah. One of these days, she and I are going to review uh, our new RPGs for you too. Yes, it'll happen. Yeah, sometime in this century. When I invent more time yeah. or lack less sleep. I feel like what, now what we're doing is we're trying to wait until everyone's bought all the RPGs so we don't even have to do it anymore. And then the show can just be us going, weren't those great? But, uh... <laughs> yeah, right. We have a lot of good things going for us. Animus, if you've played that game, what other games have you played? I'm interested. I don't know how fast he can update that. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so this was a great event. Do, do we know how much we made for... No, Chernobyl? not yet. We're waiting for Francisco to tell us. I mean, we made at least $160. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's a lot. driving that purple Porsche out there just to oh. make up the difference. Oh, that's totally cool. See, Richard Lowe, um, I don't know if everyone can see what he's saying, but he says, you guys rock for doing this. I had real issues reading until I was like seven. So keep, it, so keep. it's awesome you're helping kids with it. Well, yeah. You know what you folks can really do out there is you donate now, but if you if you buy the adventure, every person you play this adventure with is going to want to hear the story behind it. They're going to want to come by and see like you know archival footage of these events. And oh, and then, we're recording this right now. Yeah, and then they'll be able they'll they'll be ready to donate to the next one for the next piece of cool stuff. So if you get this game, play it with as many of your groups as you can. Get them in on it. You know what I mean? Hey, yeah. record your own games and send them to us. I don't know if we'll oh, display yeah, them. Oh yeah, that's great. But yeah, let us know. Because um, Castle Ravenlaw. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I have that one. Well, what I read that book. I read the first Ravenloft book. Uh, uh, the, the the one about the elf that became a vampire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wasn't it the? It was about the um, the knight though too, wasn't it? Or was it a different one? I think that was the second one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I read I read one about the Lord Soth that was really good. Okay. And had a wear badger in it, which yeah. I thought was really cool. You guys wrap up. I have to go yeah. gather more people. If they had a wear honey badger. Oh! I'm in. <laughs> right. Honey badger don't give it. So yeah. Yeah. Wear. Wear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a shirt. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you should talk about my track show. Tell people about uh, the track you're on. I think I'm on two tracks on the album. Um, my friend Voltaire approached me and was uh, like, hey, you know, I'm doing this Star Trek, Star Wars combo comedy album. Because, I mean, Voltaire's great. Like, he really has he knows his audience and he gives the audience what they want you know but in a in a unique way and uh, yeah we actually recorded um, Tuvok I'm, I can't remember the actors names right now but Tuvok and uh, Lieutenant um, Kim Ensign Kim Ensign Kim, Kim um, at my recording studio in North Hollywood Central Command Studios and then obviously my parts there too and some of Voltaire's parts, and the rest was recorded in, in New York. Nice. But, uh, well, it's great. It's, yeah. a, it's a great album, and his library of Star Trek work is really cool. He did a, a the song that's the theme for my Star Trek podcast, The USS Make Shit Up, is a really great song, and, and that, that favors the fact that Star Trek plots are wonderfully cyclical and strange, and it's very cool. Well, I think you run into any, a, a, any kind of, uh, you know, when a series is planned out, it, you might only be, you might only have the first season planned out, and then it's like, oh, crap, we're renewed for another season. Oh, yeah. well, well, USS uh, makes shit up. <laughs> something that I just realized is that, um, uh, it's like, uh, 
what is it, Law and Order Special Victims Unit is like 13 seasons deep, and now they've run out of crimes. So most of SVU now is them complaining about no crime to be had. It's like they've run out of plots. That's hilarious. Um, and plus they're doing that many others, you know, let's see, uh, Law well, and Order. they can do like Fringe just did and just m keep going and make it a different storyline altogether. That's true. Oh, or on that, I'm going to wrap up. Okay. With you guys. These All right. Are awesome. All right. We'll see you so next happy. time. We got our free water, so we're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> there might be one cupcake left. <laughs> I think there is. All right. We have more people. We have more people for you guys. You played with Keith Baker, yes. who rocks the hizzy yeah, it was in fantastic. his stuff. Tell me about him. <laughs> he's, he's wonderful at just like making it real. Like my face the whole time was just like, oh, 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 okay. So I'm scared. He was really good at like making me uncomfortable. Yeah, it was one of the most descriptive and and uh, active games I've ever been in. It was so much fun. Uh, you're a little kid, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That was good. I loved it. I played Jordan the Jock because I normally don't touch anything that swings a sword. I'm normally a, an arcane guy, and I was like, screw it, I'm going different this time. So I got to play Jordan. It was fun. Awesome. Yeah, you had really good character, like, dialogue and stuff. Thank you. you just were I had good people to play with. <laughs> um, yeah. So what, what, you, you were the, uh, um, the cheerleader. I was. It was really uncomfortable, actually. You, usually I play angry, quiet, Selfie characters, <laughs> so it was weird to be the the bubbly, joyous person. It's kind of uh, weird. And I never pulled out the. Uh, uh, my character apparently hated your character. We couldn't oh. stand each other. Yeah, yeah. We didn't we didn't wind up we didn't wind up uh, pulling that out. But uh, but yeah, you, you just you sort of ruined everything in my life. And uh, and you know, I just I play I played the weird girl. I played the Ali Sheedy. So uh, in Breakfast Club, um, the depressed and lonely and sad and. <laughs> But yeah. Uh, <laughs> that describes that character makes me sad. <laughs> Dude, it's a depressing character. <laughs> it's but I think. She, well, I got the I got that that the uh, that sort of the sort of uh, of despair. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Which is awesome. I love that. <laughs> well, that even dissolve it. Like you no, I have that. I have nice. that. Yeah. It's 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 it comes from my soul. Oh. <laughs> so as long as I've got that, I'm fine. So what do you guys tell me what we were? And what do you do? Um, I'm uh, Adam Livermore. I'm a graphic designer, um, and uh, I work on mostly nerdy, geeky stuff uh, like Battlestar Galactica and Serenity, and uh, trying to get on uh, the Shield show. Um, you know, fingers crossed on that. So. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, it's uh, you can see it on my website. It's AdamLivermore.com. It's uh, the the show we we we, we did a, a seven minute short called Shielded, uh, which is all about. Uh, um, a uh, unexpected uh, job interview in uh, uh, on to, to become a uh, graphic designer for Shield as opposed to on Shield. It, it's essentially a, a portfolio piece for me, but it was it was a lot of fun to do. Got a lot of really really cool people working on it. So yeah. Hello, um, my name is Sandra Doherty. I do the Sex Nerd Sandra podcast on the Nerdist Industries Network, um, and I'm a sex educator in the LA area. I talk about sex a lot in a sex positive, healthy, respectful kind of way. Don't get the wrong idea. That's what I do. Uh, I'm Brian Vance. I'm an independent film producer and director. Um, I just finished producing a film called The Boys of the Bar. Uh, we're actually uh, fully funded, fully shot, and getting ready to do a Kickstarter to get our music rights. Uh, we're going after a couple of big artists for some songs. Funny, funny show. Um, look for it in the future and look for our Kickstarter. We uh, could use some a little bit of boost there. So. This is so fancy. <laughs> so tell me more about like the different scenes. So everybody here got to play um, the same. Where is it? The same adventure. Oh my god, my my place is so messy. It's right underneath there. Yeah. So this the adventure is called Penance. Did you guys sign this already? No, I haven't yet. So you guys need to sign this and that because.
because um, Richard Lowe actually bought that, and um, I'm having everybody sign it for him. I don't have a pen. <laughs> um, so yeah, there was like three major things that happened in the adventure that I played when Keith Dungeon Mastered it for us at Comic Con. Mm -hmm. So what were like the big things that you guys really remember that were like really blah? Do we have to? Can we give things away? Because I know that people can also buy the. Oh, okay, all right, okay. I'm like, oh. Spoiler, spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! <laughs> uh, I, I think it was when your sister died. Oh yeah! Oh my God! It was like emotional. Like I got a little like you know pale in the face, and everyone like got like really sad, and there was like a no. Look, it's, that would be specifically because she went to save her sister and rolled a natural one. I know, that's right. And she I, died in her arms. Oh, it was so on sad. On fire. Yeah, on fire. Oh, I, I, okay, I, I rolled a natural one, and my history was that I had caught the cat on fire when I was trying to heal it, like in practice, and that's why I was down in the dungeons. So I accidentally lit my sister on fire <laughs> instead of trying to save her. But also it was good, kind of, because she was going to become a zombie anyway, but then really it was... Just, that's kind of of a horrible thing to do to your little sister. We should have yeah. known that she was going to die because she was the only person that I liked and uh, she was your sister and she was Junior's best friend. And Bye guys. This would be Bye. Junior. Bye. It was fun playing with you. Oh, you too, Cheers, my, 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 my team, my team. Yeah. It's all about the team. All right. <laughs> um, aside from that, uh, what was memorable? We had uh, the um, uh, the dude that we, were, we we tried to kill at the beginning who was like made of sand and uh, oh yeah, yeah. all the, the zombies at the at the gate. At the, uh, um, we ended up with uh, a death in the game. True. Yeah. Um, yeah. The end was really like phenomenal the way it all came together. Yeah, it did. It worked out quite yeah. quite quite well. So that was good. Um, there, was, there was sacrifice. There were tears. There was uh, heroism. It was kind of like the end of Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> A little bit. Really? I was thinking Finding Nemo. <laughs> Maybe both? Sure. Finding the Beast? <laughs> <laughs> or Beauty and Nemo. <laughs> it sounds like a game our characters played after the show was over. Yeah. Well, we, we got married after and had credits. kids. We yeah, were yeah, playing yeah. those games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got married and had kids. Uh -huh. so. yeah, uh, and I was living in a shack in the end of town. <laughs> but she ended up hooking up with my little brother. That's true, that's true. He was persistent. Oh, yeah. Like, I totally blew off the little brother. And then uh, he got really, like, pissed off and he left and went on this, like, crazy travels and hated women for the rest of his life. <laughs> it was sad. He, like, made this chart of um, my pros and cons. <laughs> and I had more cons than pros. And then he just hated me. Well, he tried to kiss me in the game, and I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. First, he saved my life, because I was going to go under, like, under below, you know, zero on hit points and be all, but then I had to, like, heal people, so he stepped in the way and took it, but then he was dying and died. Yeah, and then, then I was turned, I was turned into the guy. Donated $500. <laughs> oh my awesome. god! Thank nice. you! Good job! Thank you! Yes! Good Thank job! You <laughs> I said your name on here, well, but I think fantastic. you wanted to be anonymous. Hey guys! Somebody just donated $500! <laughs> 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 Awesome. I'm gonna cry and throw up at the same time. <laughs> that would be entertaining. <laughs> I, my character kept yeah. throwing up on his armor. <laughs> my, I think I threw up three times. Yeah, I, necromancy makes you a little like. Uh, I, I get. I have a soft stomach. Yeah. You got a condition. I have a condition. Yeah. It's hereditary. Yeah. I can yeah. do like zombie movies totally, but when there's like 200. And when they're coming up to you. <laughs> In your face. I kept like pigeon pooping out my mouth on the mirror. It was bad. It was really bad. <laughs> 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 no, I've got that in my head forever. Yep. Just kidding. Yep. <laughs> Only like five minutes. It's a long time in my life. Here, now you won't have it in, in your thing. Congratulations on the $500. <laughs> yes, yes, excellent. Um, it's a very small couch. I mean, it's a cozy couch. Yeah. I'm cozy. <laughs> I don't know. I guess you should 
talk about donating. Yeah, so the charity, if you're just here, you only have a half hour left to donate, the charity is Reach Out and Read. It looks like this, rorlosangeles.com. that buys books for pediatrician offices um, so that and then the pediatricians will tell the parents like how to get your kids to read and the benefits of getting your kids to read from like six months old up to like six years old but I know from firsthand one of my friends she just had a baby and from three months old we've been putting books and comic books in front of him so yeah this kid is like three months old we're like look a book take him to museums he's like looking at art and looking at these books Books. By six months, he's got the books. He's, he was holding up, I have a picture somewhere. He's holding up like a, a Neil Gaiman comic. Nice. And he's just like on his back, he's holding it himself, and he's like turning pages. He knows like sequential art. It's phenomenal. Awesome. And you know what? He loves iPads too. Yeah. But he also loves books and all like the kids' books on the lower shelf. And he'll go in and he'll just like look at books. I want to, I don't want to read that. I want to read this. Okay, I'm done. It's like totally surreal. That's awesome. So like they went in and did all this research about like uh, the effects and it's if you start reading at a really young age or even putting books in front of kids, mm -hmm. they, they get it more and then they, they do better in school and all that. So that's the spiel. It really worked for raising money. They lost federal funding two years ago. So I know. So like literally they're only getting money off of places like this. And then last year, I think they only had one, pe one group of people mm -hmm. throw them a charity event. Really? So I did it in January and then also right now. So Thank you. It's for the babies. <laughs> Help the babies. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, so um where can people find you on Twitter? Uh I'm my I'm at uh, Lexigeek, L E X I G E E K on Twitter. At Sex Nerd Sandra. And I actually don't Twitter at all, but I I know. Hey, old I'm, tra man. I'm trying to do my old man thing. Okay? <laughs> um, but I am. On, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, but I am on Facebook, Brian Vance, and also under uh, Trilogy Productions for my company. Trilogy Productions LLC. Go do this thing because you're doing this already, and go look them up because they're all awesome. And um, I know you. I just met you guys, and um, he vouched for you more, but he's totally in the crew now. <laughs> Excellent. Yay, so um, yeah, I guess we'll get another group in. All right. But cool. just make sure well, you retweet every. Absolutely. Hey, Tate! Hey, Tate! Hey, Tate! Just, um, uh, just whatever my yeah, Twitter is. Okay. Yeah. Um, except for turn one hour into 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's the Sharpie. Um, where's that box right there? Okay. Oh, okay. The origins of the last Hey, Neil and Keith. I was like, no. Can you grab them? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm calling more people. Over. Sorry. I'm calling more people over um, to say hi. But um, yeah, somebody just donated $500, and that's so awesome. Like, I cannot believe this is totally happening. Um, the charity is going to be really, really excited. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go grab some more people to talk. Um, and, so yeah, um, I'll be right back. My phone. Oh yeah. And if um, I know, totally cool, right? So if anyone wants to purchase the books, if they're still available, or um, you can purchase the Sushi Girl um, shirts for twenty-five dollars, and the money will go to the charity. You can donate it directly to Satine S F at Yahoo.com. That's S A T I N E S is in Sam, F is in Frank at Yahoo.com. It'll go directly there. Just put the size you want. We've got small, medium, large. Um, we only have a half hour left, so buy, people, buy. We raise more money. We, we need a thousand dollars. Yeah. You want to come in? Yeah. Uh, I introduced myself already, right? So. You can do it again. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Bo Ryan. Um,
He's a rad nerd. I'm just this guy, you know? Uh, yeah, the face and overlord of rad nerd. Um, I also work at Machinima. Uh, we just launched the Halo 4 Ford Unto Dawn web series, which is like the most expensive web series ever made um, with a budget of millions of dollars. Well, see, if you say it like that, yeah. it has to be awesome. Because if, if you even like flinch a little bit, the nerds will eat you alive. Yeah, it, I, it, it's been it's been uh, liked. It's been liked a lot. Um, How do you do research to make sure that you don't crack that up? <laughs> I think they have the, the guys behind it are you know um, uh, the guys who who made Halo, and so um, I'm not like a, like a scientifical Halo like but fan. But you appreciate science and Halo. I do. Yeah, okay. I'm not I'm not huge. I'm not a big Halo guy, but uh, I love the shit out of this series. See, if they made yeah. it more RPG style, I would play it. I just can't play um, like first person. So okay. It gives me a headache and I get like weird, right? Like crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tracy's the same way. She she it's really hard for her to do that. So yeah. we but. need to talk to people to make really fun girl versions or satin versions. <laughs> I can't say girls. I have a ton of girlfriends that play them. Right. But like, yeah. I want to play Halo. I know. I wish I was good at it. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of really good games that I'm just not good at. Yeah. You know, Gears of War is one of them. It's a really oh, awesome good. game, but I just fucking suck at it, you know? <laughs> the Resident Evils, I just, I'm terrible with that camera above the shoulder. Um, yeah, so I just stick to what I'm good at. I'm playing Borderlands 2 right now. How is it? I love it. And it's easier to play? Yeah. Uh, I heard it's better to play on the PC, so that's that's what I'm doing. Yay for Resident Evil! Yay for Resident <laughs> Evil! Um, yeah, and, and Leon Kennedy was just here, so Who? Uh, Matt Mercer. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. he's Leon Kennedy, so. I was like, wait, I did, they're not on my list. <laughs> yeah, of the new Resident Evil Six. Yeah, yeah that just came out. Um, but uh, yeah, where are we at with our goal? Well, we just. Are we there yet? Somebody just donated five hundred dollars. Thank you. That is amazing. Thank you for doing that. Lots of uh, karma points for you. I, um, I lost my phone, and in my phone will say how much it's made so far. I'm just giving everybody my email address. I'm saying, just donate to my email it's address. It's just the internet. <laughs> yeah, oh my goodness. Just, I'm giving the internet my uh, email address. Just treat it nicely, please, because um, I would appreciate that. <laughs> What's up, Joe Rodriguez, 21 Miles? How are you? <laughs> Hi, Joe. I had to say it like that because I'm feeling saucy right now from the $500 you just got. Yeah, started. that's huge. That's the biggest Kind of turns me on a little bit. <laughs> yeah, she's she's a little she's a little wet over here, guys. It's a little hot. Oh boy. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Someone, someone got a Capri Sun or something? Or they gonna have? Tell us more about your character that you played. Uh, so I played Blaze. Um, totally. Uh, Blaze is like a a nerd who. Uh, he wasn't the popular kid in school. But he looked cool. Uh, he uh, he's def he definitely looked cool. He was a guy that just read books throughout school while everyone went out. Yeah, exactly. So it really wasn't that far of a stretch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's a wizard. Um, he's got a little staff, his little hoodie, and uh. I drew him that because before we had. So before we had um, Raven, I think her name is, or like the, the goth girl at the game, I thought that we made a character, the wizard, who was androgynous, so it might be a girl, might be a boy, and right. that's why he's got like the hair, and he's like, you can't really see his face. Yeah. So, you know, you could have played it as a female or a male. I could have, yeah. It's very, very true. What was your uh, favorite part, or most, most dramatic part? Uh, it got really dramatic when my my favorite cat, uh, Loki, oh, the Lokes, the Lokes uh, turned into a zombie cat. Oh. And, um, yeah, it was really disappointing. So, oh, I can um, feel the, it. The cat, the cat, <laughs> the cat, you know, the cat had to die. I mean, it was already dead, but, you know. We gotta, we gotta kill a kill my favorite cat. Did you guys figure out how to save zombies? Uh, people? Did we figure that out? No, no. I think we just ran, which is, <laughs> I think that's what we did. We just 
ran. We were all wussies. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, if, you, if you're going to turn into a zombie, you can hold the, the person turning. Did you figure that one out? No. Oh. I didn't, I didn't pick that lock. Another way. <laughs> Let's do this again. <laughs> See, that's why I like these adventures, because every table is totally different. Right. And people did it differently, because they're individuals. Yeah. Wow. So that was great. You're like, God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. I want to do it again now. Yeah, Round two. I lost my phone again. Here. Oh, look at these. We got cool T-shirts. We're giving these out. Um, I'm going to a gallery. Oh, you're, you're, you're leaving. Revenge is a dish best served cold. So I'm gonna go. Oh, these are these are cool. Yeah, I miss your face. I miss your face. Tell everybody um, goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. It's been enjoyable. I'm Ramon Govea, by the way, writer, producer. Cool. And uh, oh, you have to put your head down more. Down more? Yeah. Oh, here we go. Uh, oh yeah, cool. Uh, working on an iPhone app with Satine here. Uh, yeah. You'll get to see her art. It's Somebody else donated fifty dollars. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Um, we look related. Yeah. We are brothers. I think. Yeah. We go to, we go to the same barber. Same one. Yeah. Yeah. Murray Joe. How much was? Um, somebody donated 500 That's awesome. And then somebody else just donated $50 That's awesome. to Satin SF he goes, um, at Yahoo on Wonderful. PayPal. So I, we, we didn't have a much. donation button. So just, you know. huh? Oh, yeah, totally anonymous. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So let's find out how much we made so far. We have 20 minutes left. Let's do this. Let's do this. Close. Oh, I, can't, I can't Twitter fast enough. <laughs> That was fun. Here. That was fun. Do it yeah. Why don't you jump uh, over here? Let's, you let's switch. Yeah, do a on the couch quick, here. Do a little quick. Okay. Oh, okay. That was awesome. We had yes. so much fun. Thank you I'll for having you us. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yes. Well, thanks for doing do your Goodbye, Internet. Thank you for your. That was amazing. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I was thoroughly entertained by you guys. Okay. Dungeon yeah. Master Extraordinaire. Dungeon Mastering. Uh, where's, where am I looking here? Oh, you're looking there. My That's just what we look like. Oh, Sam, you want to hang here? out for a second? Sure. Come on in the middle. Word. <laughs> Yeah, Dungeon Mastering was really fun. Uh, we had a really good group uh, that really got into it. So, yeah. lots of character voices. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, that's a really cool thing about having like actors at your table, right. voice actors. Yeah, and everyone went with it. They had a lot of fun. Uh, it made Dungeon Mastering really easy because I didn't have to pull anything out of anyone. Yeah. I just kind of had to narrate and hang back and watch them do their thing. So. Really awkward. We're just gonna do this. Okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah, ma make him do all the work. You hold it. You hold it. <laughs> I can barely, I can barely hold this. Uh, yeah, it was fun. Thanks for having us. It was uh, a really good time. Well, what did you think time. since we played it in uh, Comic Con? Yeah. What did you think with the way they have solved the problem? You know what was interesting is you never really know what to expect when you have a certain group of people there. So. What we did at the Omni during Comic Con was so completely different than what these characters chose to do. So everyone kind of ran with their backstory, and there's just completely different dynamics. So it's really cool that you can run, um, you can run a campaign or, or you know run a session, and just get something completely different each time. Even though the characters are basically the same, you know, same stats and all that stuff, you're still going to get a completely different experience based on what characters are choosing and what what the people are choosing to do. So it was interesting. It was really fun. I mean, they chose some really creative things to do that like, I never would have thought of. Well, in like these like things. Um, so they had this interesting relationship with Angus, 
where because he was failing on a lot of his roles, uh, he didn't get a chance to really get into any of the fights. Right. So they would defeat a lot of the, the the monsters and zombies before he even got to do anything. And so he had this habit of, after they were all dead, just going around chopping off their heads. Yeah. So that was like what he got known for, even though he was a chaperone and he was supposed to be the one sort of protecting them. Right. Um, Jordan ended up uh, ended up dying from the uh, collapse in the tunnel. So they lost like one of their main characters before even the major encounter. Um, so we had uh, the young junior ended up ha taking over as the Baron when they ran into the undead Baron later. So that was unexpected. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was just really cool. It was just random stuff that like, you never, never expect. Yeah. So. Who was your favorite character? Uh, my favorite character, I really enjoyed um, Travis's uh, junior character. He really got into it and made him like a really young kind of. He did the voice too, yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a great voice actor. Yeah, he's right. the voice of Piglet, so he brought a whole new dynamic to it. I know when we gamed, there was this uh, Junior and Jordan sort of fight over Ash, uh, but with this one, it was just very different because because Junior really played young, so he was like a little kid that was like a smart ass, and he was a thief, so he was going around stealing coins from the dead bodies and just overall just causing problems. It was really funny. Cool. So yeah, it was a good experience. Awesome. Definitely had fun. What about you? I was here hosting. What did you think of? Uh, the whole experience. Uh, it seemed pretty awesome. I w actually wish I could have sat in on one of the games yeah. and uh, just actually been a part of it. It sounds cool. really fun. Um, yeah, I, li I like the uh, sort of, I don't want to say stereotypical, but uh, yeah, those, those John Hughes style characters. Yeah. I think is really awesome. The high schoolers yeah. trying to uh, solve the mystery and yeah, it was really it was really funny because they had an idea that something bad was going to happen when they took the skull, right. but of course they knew they had to take it anyway, so I mean, it, it was it was a lot of fun. There's a lot of surprises, and I tried to throw in as much of the backstory as possible, yeah. so that they would really feel kind of tied into the adventure. So, yeah. threw in their favorite cats, you know, seeing them as undead, and one person had written that uh, their favorite cat. No, actually, two people wrote the same name for their favorite cat. Huh. So we actually had two people write buttons as their favorite cat. Weird. So when I when I brought <laughs> buttons back later, both of them were like, "Oh no, buttons!" And one of them actually wrote that the name Buttons came from the fact that this cat liked to eat buttons. So when I ended up killing the cat, it exploded and buttons so cool. flew everywhere. Yeah. And they really liked that. You know? Yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, so it was definitely really cool. Is this still a recording? Yeah, it's still recording. Just the laptop goes into a lag. Oh, okay, cool. Every 20 minutes we're like, uh, just because of that. Oh, okay. Well, I love this swag that, that I got here, the uh, the player's handbook. Yeah, it's the original. The AD&D player's handbook. So I had everybody yeah, at the awesome, table sign it. It was pretty oh, cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, I was going to have you raffle it, but I, you were busy. So I, <laughs> no, I just look at it, and I was like, um, <laughs> what's going on here? Sweet. That's yours. But everyone else can actually purchase. Oh, okay. Yeah, everyone's just be hanging out. you got only 15 minutes left with us. Yeah, we're almost done here. Um, but what you can purchase online is the player's handbook. And it's like, what is this, gold foil and silver foil? Yeah, and it's really nice. It's, it's like, a really nice one. Feel that. Touch it's it like with a, your it's hand. It's like a collector's edition. Is it's super. Like. I know. I'm really jealous. I am like, why, am I, why am I selling these? I should keep them. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> it's really rad. The pictures are. I might lick it. Uh, I'm not going to lick it. <laughs> but I want to. <laughs> That's extra. For five more dollars. That's all? I know. Well, I'm easy about this book because. But um, I was telling everyone else, like, I started playing Dungeons and Dragons like 17 years ago. Um, but five years before that, I found my dad's. Well, my dad was going through a bunch of boxes, but he had the original red box. Really? So he had his his characters, and I would look at it and and like go through. So that was like five years before I actually started playing. Yeah. But I mean, it was like yeah, it was the old school one yeah, with like the really school, bad yeah. art. I mean, it was good art, but it wasn't like <laughs> no, wasn't like what they have now. Well, it's amazing Shoot, how I can't even draw the way they draw. It's just amazing how D and D has evolved over the years, and it's really it's really recent. Here's this. Oh. It's really just becoming a bigger thing. I think it's awesome because I didn't start yeah. playing. D&D 
be until college. Nice. And it was one of those things where I was like, oh, what's D&D? &D? I think it's, I was like, it's so in the front. It's such a cool idea, but I was always like, oh man, I don't know if I should start playing Dungeons and Dragons because it has such a bad rap. Of course, I was a closet geek anyway. No idea what right up here. Or at the back. Oh. There you go. That's what I meant. Yearbook style. Um, but when I started playing, it's just so much fun. Just that's one of those things where, like, yeah. until you play it, you don't really understand how fun it is. Right. Um, so I'm glad, like, it's becoming really popular now. I have people asking me, like, "We're playing Dungeons and Dragons. That sounds awesome. I want to play." Yeah. And I never used to get that before. Yeah. It mostly yeah. is adults. You know why? Because yeah. when you're a kid, you're like worried about everybody's thoughts about you. But yeah. as an adult, sure. you pretty much know what you like, and yeah. it doesn't matter what other people think. Yeah. 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 It's a maturity thing, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy. To tell everyone that I know in the real world how much I play, love playing D and D. Yeah. It's so awesome. We need to get Keith over here to help us with the last ten minutes. Yeah. Can you go grab him, please? Yeah, I'll go get him. Are you staying here? Oh, Are you okay. gonna leave? No, I mean I can wait for 15, 10, 10 minutes. There's only ten minutes. Okay, I signed it. Oh, cool. Thank you. Um, what did you think of the whole experience? Uh, well, you know, I, I really wanted to play, but yeah. this is really fun too. Yeah. So this right here is the mastermind, Keith Baker. Hello. Don't look at that one because that one's gonna freak you out. All right. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a super delay. All right. So um. Whoa! I'm like whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. So what was your inspiration for this little campaign setting? Uh, so you know the the whole basic idea is. I wanted something that's sort of very accessible, you know, with especially something like this, you don't know how recently people are going to have played. And so, uh, there you go. Um, someone, what? Excellent. Awesome, Thank you, whoever you are. Awesome. Okay, I'm sorry, I got to interrupt. $850 was just donated in the past, like, hour. That is so Excellent. Awesome. You guys are awesome. That's really great. That is really great. Did we reach our goal? Yay! You people. Go awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That is re that is really awesome. Thank you. Yeah. You know, thanks to all of you oh, again. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. I mean, we're really gonna we're really gonna help some kids learn to read. It's so awesome. I love it. And play D and D. Yeah. <laughs> Step one, learn to read. Step two, pick up the dice. I like cry or pee. You know, it's one or the other. Yeah. I mean, liquid has yeah, to lead. Yeah. It's a 50 50 shot every time. <laughs> Um, so yeah, as you were saying, you want to make oh, it more so accessible. Oh, so you want something that's accessible even if people don't know. So so the characters, you know, again, it's sort of Breakfast Club in Dungeons and Dragons, and you know that's that sort of people can yeah. can sort of get. Oh, he's the jock, he's the nerd. You know, it's sort of yes, you're the fighter and the wizard, but you can also sort of say, oh, jock and nerd. I get what that's about. Yeah. Um, and that it's very much sort of that part of the story is easy to get, and it's very straightforward. You're going in a dungeon, uh, but then you throw in this other twist, which is both easy to get. Yeah. People understand that archetype, yeah. but it's totally like, whoa, I wasn't seeing that coming. Yeah. So that's great. Uh, so well, I really love the whole thing that you put together. It's freaking awesome. But are you like you're oh you're like? That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you killed Satine. I hope you're proud. Yeah, five hours. That's I really rad. <laughs> yeah, you guys are making Satine explode over here. <laughs> I didn't think we I'm still it. waiting <laughs> down somewhere. We we get the thing and, and she says, I'm gonna cry or pee. And it's just like that. These are the options. Yeah. You know. I've seen that movie. <laughs> I won't explode animus. Um Wow, it's really warm and quiet in here all the time. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. We're all overwhelmed. Uh, Anima says, Ebron Mastermind. He knows who you is. Mm -mm. <laughs> so tell us about your other game. I have a game. brain under, <laughs> under my hat yeah. uh, that I'm hiding. It's a hologram. Uh, so I know other game. You know, I, I go for the gloomy stuff. I have yeah. a card game yeah. named Gloom, <laughs> and, you know, it's all about bad things happening. So this game, obviously, I'm not saying anything terrible happens to someone's little sister, but, you know. But something might. But something might. Um, yeah, we got seven uh, minutes. Let's just keep going. I'm, gonna I'm here. Gonna go I'm, for I'm hanging for seven minutes. <laughs> Satine's gonna go either throw up, pee, or cry. We're not sure where. Quickly, you get back. Well, village. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> mm. and yeah, what else? So y'all just made Cthulhu Flux. Just came out. Tell me about Cthulhu Flux. Uh, Cthulhu Flux. So Flux is a card game where the rules are constantly changing and things like that. 
they want to do a Cthulhu version, but the people who do Looney Labs, they're not really Lovecrafty people. Right. They're like more happy hippie people. So they came to me, uh, and <laughs> said, "Let's get the Doctor of Gloom himself." Exactly. Yeah. And it was a fun challenge because I really wanted it to be more than just flux with. Uh, Cthulhu names on it. Mm -hmm. You know, I really wanted it to capture some of the feel, to mm -hmm. like feel like, you know, yeah, there's a reason this is Cthulhu. So part of it is you have this ongoing threat that everybody could die. Cool. You know, so you have to try and win the game, but you also have to try and keep everybody from losing at the same time. That's really awesome. It's got other other elements, but it's a quick, fast, fun game. So what really drew you to sort of building games like this? Like, uh, I mean, they seem to be going over really well with just the streamlined well, nature of them. Well, part of the idea with this, you know, I mean, is again, I have been doing this thing where I travel around the world running games for people. And so a big focus for me is what I like about role playing is the story you build up over time. Sure. Uh, someone was just talking about the little sister and saying, well, I make them, give them buttons to push. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is the thing is, normally if we play for eight months, those buttons come up. Sure. We form them together. Right. Whereas when you're doing a one-shot game, it's a very different sort of thing. And so to me, it's all about... I love storytelling, and it's just this, how do you take the one-shot adventure and make it a satisfying story? Sure. You know, how do you really make it um, feel complete? And how do you make people take these characters that they didn't make and actually feel some sense of attachment to them? So that's something just over the last couple of years I've been like trying to sort of figure out what works, adding things here and there. Um, so again, so you what know, are some of the ways that you have found to do that? I mean, for those right, that didn't get to right, right. watch the whole game. And so, so I mean, like, one of the key ones for me on a one-shot, for example, is so the characters. First, you have these core ideas that are easy to get, but they all connect to each other in various ways. And so that's the point. It's like if you just dropped in and watched an episode of a TV show, mm -hmm. the characters have connections. Sure. It's not just there's a fighter and a wizard and a thief. It's, well, the thief is the fighter's kid brother. Mm -hmm. And like, okay, that's a connection. I get that. But then also, what I always do is the characters have a set of questions. Sure. So again, for the people who didn't see it, at the start of the game, everybody has to uh, answer some questions. And this is something I actually picked up from a game called Dread, which I highly recommend to anyone who uh, you know plays role-playing games. Um, and the point is, it starts off with questions. Yes, yes it is. It's a good game. Uh, it starts off with questions like, okay, they're all on penance. They all have done something wrong. For most characters, the question is, what did you do wrong? You know, what was it that has got you in detention, sure. essentially? Uh, a couple characters have things like the nerd has, oh, okay, you've always had to deal with the popular kids, you know, including yeah. the jock and the cheerleader. How do you feel about them? You know, do you essentially want to impress them? Do you want revenge on them? Sure. So you're giving these characters motivations that sort of carry them throughout the right. story. And for example, the cheerleader has a sister, and I say, oh, you had a fight with your sister. What did you fight about? Mm -hmm. And then the the thief character is best friends with the sister. Sure. And I'm like, oh, the sister told you to do something. What's that about? And so then when the sister shows up, mm -hmm. And I've read their answers, so I'm like, well, when the sister shows up, I know. Oh, you wouldn't let her wear the blue dress. Yeah. Oh, you did, you know. And it's like, she's not just this random character that has no connection. It's the character they've made her out to be. Right. And so, even though I've created the whole story and I know what it is, you have a personal attachment to who these people right. are. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, that's sort of like one of the the you know biggest ones that I said. And then working those things in, you know, finding a way to, to bring that sister in. And so when this person gets randomly in trouble, you actually care. So uh, what, are, what are some, we have a question oh, here, here from Animus. What are some of the questions that you ask? And uh, are they this sort of thing? Was that, are they the same sort of for question for each character? character yeah. They're character specific, but there's a few that everybody got. So I'll say with this adventure in particular, one of the things about the town is that there is a inn called the Crooked Cat that's filled with cats. And almost everybody gets the question, hey, this inn has a lot of cats. Who's your favorite cat? 
and just because zombies show up and there are zombie cats. And right. it's, again, that, oh, you're not just fighting a thing, you're fighting the zombie of your favorite cat. Right. And how does that feel? And one of the funny things that I was mentioning at my table is two of the people, before even conversing, wrote the same name for a cat. Which is hilarious. <laughs> In mine, I will say three of the four cats that we ended up getting all have one eye. Are you serious? Yes. Yeah. For some reason, <laughs> it was the one-eyed cat bonanza. <laughs> My favorite, though, was the kid. Uh, the kid She's had bad. his story, his one-eyed cat, he, he made an eye patch for him. Um, but they do tie in for the story. So again, like I said, the cheerleader has uh, a little sister, and she fought with a sister. What did she fight about? And the point is, then when you come up and there's scary things, it's, uh, oh my god, she left this thing unresolved. Her last thing that happened with her sister was that she fought. Uh, you know, can she resolve that? You know, so it's, <laughs> it's that sort of making the situation a little, you know, have a little more depth. Yeah. Um, and some of the questions are not as important, but another one, is the kid has, he knows a secret about the temple. What is it? And that's something where it could be trivial. Right. It could be, oh, there's a there's a painting no one else knows for about. For example, in our game, uh, the secret for the temple was that there's peepholes in near the frescoes by the women's showers. Uh -huh. So he ended up using that as like a lead-in to the secret right. passage. And and again, someone else had, there's catacombs under the, the temple. And so they didn't end up needing to use it. But obviously they could have. Sure. If they had to get in, it would have been like, oh, what happens? Junior knows. Right. And my point is, those exist because he said that's the secret. Right. Uh, so you give a little bit of power to the player before the game starts and then incorporate it. Uh, Signing I time. A gold Sharpie and a silver Sharpie in my pocket. So this is Richard Lowe. Oh, hey, Richard. Uh, that way I can sign it to you. There you go. Oh, I need to sign it. We have one more minute, guys. All right. One more minute before this uh, whole shindig ends. Yeah, thanks for everyone for watching. I can't yeah. believe we made our goal. We had a really great experience. And you guys are awesome, and you totally pulled through and helped us out for Dungeons and Dragons, for players everywhere, RPG players, for Reach Out and Read. Um, that's at Read Together um, for Twitter. And I'm um, glad I, I almost Twitter? got wrong. Uh, at Hell Cow Keith. Yeah. Hell Cow. A T L L. C O W K E I T H. And uh, you can find me uh, at Ramon Govea. Um, if you like fan films, we did a Left 4 Dead fan film earlier this year, and we're going to do quite a few more over the next uh, few months. So look us up. Awesome. And I'm Sad Team Phoenix, and Sam Proof already left because he had another shindig to go to. We have to close out because we have to All right. leave. Yeah, it's again. time. Thank you, so Thank you so much. You're Thank you, guys. Awesome. You really made a difference. Thank you so much. And I got you to sign my book. Yes. You were signing yours. I want to make sure I got it. And I want to take a uh, picture of the...